Um, while while you're while you're doing that, we should uh, probably introduce you. We got uh we got Demon Mama. Uh, yeah, let's uh uh do a shout out for uh for that and in the thing. How do I do this? Okay. Demon Mama. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let me just turn. Thanks for coming for being on. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I've been yeah. I've been pretty excited for all this. So. Uh, oh I've yeah! Been oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah we've been yeah. we've been psyched. Um, you've been streaming. Uh, you've been streaming already. You're joining us in. Yeah, in yeah, I'm streaming right now. I'm streaming. live. So. My apologies. Yeah, that's how I how's, that, how's that going? What, you, what, what have you been uh, talking about? What, well, what we uh, we were just about to launch the promo that I cut for the uh, Hippy Dippy uh, podcast uh, debate podcast that's Ooh. happening on Friday. Um, and then before that, we were reacting to a uh, fellow by the name of John Doyle. I don't know if you're familiar with John Doyle. Oh, I need to turn my video Doyle. on. Yeah, John Doyle. John Doyle. There we go. Now you can Wait, see me. There I'm not go. sure if I am. Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, hey. Uh, John Doyle is a, uh, he's a silly guy. Uh, he's a conservative who runs a, a pretty, uh, you know, I would say a, it's not even fair to call him a conservative. The guy's a Nazi. Um, sorry, but it's true. Um, and he runs, okay. he runs a channel that's called uh, Heck Off Commie. Um, and... It is truly an embarrassing awesome. show. Um, he has Heck off commie. Is it like doggo memes for fascism? Or I, I don't know. His his <laughs> memes are always like his memes always I'm a feel small like, little fascist bean. Yeah, yeah, just a small bean. Just a small bean. Yeah, I mean the thing is with his show is that it's like it 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 seems to always be uh it all it, it seems to always uh sort of. It falls back into this these these very lazy old memes that are way outdated, um, and and uh, he has to try and like force his ideology into like Zoomer memes because that's the only thing that like people don't find it funny otherwise. Um, and like he, he force he, ideology into Zoomer memes. I don't know. Zoomer like I know, hard. but he doesn't succeed very well. Um, he's pretty honestly. He's pretty bad at memeing. He's not a very funny guy. Um, but he runs, he did this episode just recently that was called, uh, talking to Texans about pride month. And it's a real change in pace for his content. Cause he normally doesn't do like sketch comedy or anything, but he tried to do like a man on the street mm. sketch comedy thing. And it was a failure. That's hard. And Whoa. yeah, it was super hard. Very hard. To do. Yeah. Really hard to pull off. And, um, the funny thing is that, uh, basically we, we watched through the video and you can see that he's been out there all day because at the beginning it's pretty early in the day and it, and and by the end the sun is going down he's been out there for hours <laughs> and, oh it's hell yes yeah and he finds nobody he gets nobody <laughs> who, to to uh to, to like actually agree with his message like he gets a couple of people who are like vaguely homophobic like they're like oh that's not really i'm not really into that but he has to keep lying about stuff. Like he shows them this picture of like a drag queen at the drag queen story hour that all the conservatives are like super obsessed over. Oh, the, and it, the dildo rainbow. One? No, not even that one. He didn't even use that one. He just used like a rant. It's just a very tame image of like a person in like a mermaid outfit reading to kids. And then he's like, oh. and they're like, and first the people were like, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, I guess not really my thing. And then he's like, well, yeah, but how do you feel about them teaching kids how to, how to twerk and grind? I'm like that's never happened. Like where did that ha where does that ever happen oh. on any of these things? Like what are you oh. talking about? So he it's has to so keep embellishing because, it. Like, that's such a like dishonest medium in general. Like I you know, there've been some very funny man on the street whatever interview ones, but at the same time like it is so easy to juice that and to edit it to make people look like they're like agreeing with you like totally. Like I feel like it's like with like uh what, what's it called like liberty hangout will do that where it's like yeah. um uh like shit girl will just get like owned on the campuses and it's just like how this this would be like it, it'd be so easy to edit this and cherry pick parts it's it's wild they don't do that, that. I, yeah. I mean i'm looking at his channel right now the video he posted of texans wreck the pride month yeah fucking 23 minutes long it's so he long and edited, he gets nothing he surely could have edited that down to like a five minute thing of Something. Especially because the only person who even comes anywhere close to like agreeing with them is uh is this one person who also says that the reason why um the reason why uh there are tropical storms in Florida right now or like not like literally right now but in general is because the the deep state has been detonating bombs off the coast to send um to send tropical storms to to Texas and Florida and I'm just like. That's the one person you got to agree with you, 
and he does three like in th- <laughs> and by the way in this in this long 27 minute video he does like three full minute um advertisements with like for his sponsors so it's just like just padded oh to unbelievable and i was joking because i was like this is like this is like uh this is like bennett tier it is caitlin bennett tier where like caitlin bennett will leave in these people where i'm just like why would you leave that in it makes mm, you yeah, look don't horrible post that. yeah is this edited by the people who you are trying to own like why did you include <laughs> yeah. I, I mean i don't know to me my roommate usually... was like oh, go for it well go ahead no 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 that's fine oh, I, I just my roommate was interviewed on the on the like on the street there was like some news story and like they took like or like like they, they didn't fully take her out of contact but they like added like a thing where it's like yeah she said this and she's like i never fucking said that that sounds that makes me sound like a maniac and like <laughs> like what was the, it? the local uh oh um okay so like in toronto there's a thing where there's been uh some guys in a red truck who've been uh abducting women off the street and my roommate was like asked like uh they, they like interviewed my roommate to be like what do you think of this neighborhood and she was like i love it this is like my you know i live near here and they're like what do you think about these abductions and then she basically was like i don't think the answer is for people to be like terrified of their neighborhoods i think that the answer is like more holistic issues that like address like the root causes of these types of like antisocial behaviors yeah um and they mostly kept that in but then they also say that like um thinks that like they need to um do something to uh give these types of people a better purpose and she's like what the fuck are you talking about it makes it sound like i want like a jobs program for rapists what the fuck uh see that's the thing. i i i <laughs> hate malicious editing. The education camps was, is the answer. <laughs> yeah it's like damn oh god it's just so oh it's so bad um it's so bad that the malicious editing is like one of those things that gets me but it's funny, like, I watch a lot of, you know, I, on my show, I do a lot of react to conservative content, especially this month, because this month is Wrath Month, which means I've been uh, trying to do a, li- a little bit of conservative... Oh, Wrath Month. Yeah, Wrath Month, you know it. Yeah, a couple of... Uh, I'm trying to do a lot of conservative <laughs> react this month to get the wrath out of our system, because, uh, you know, the reason why we even have to have Pride Month is because of uh, people like uh, our our our, uh, our buddy uh, John Doyle there and Ben Shapiro and all these other... Uh, mm. Uh, jokers uh, is a nice way to put is it. Is there a wrath flag I can uh, hang up outside my place? You no, know, I haven't. De- show, I haven't seen uh, one, but I would yeah. love it if there was. Somebody should make a wrath mm-hmm. flag. I would love it. Yeah, that. yeah. Somebody should make a wrath flag. That's that's definitely necessary. Um, I yeah, mean, well. we found a bit of like conservative stuff to like wrath react to. We wanted to just like hang out first. I just sent you on uh, Twitter uh, the oh, like sick. watch together we've been using, so like oh, we can all watch sick. stuff at the same time. But yeah, um, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the but only uh, thing. Yeah, I mean, oh, actually, this, yeah. is, this was going to be a debate ambush stream. <laughs> uh, oh, bring it on! To, I'm here uh, for it. Show our uh, debate skills. The topic: uh, Who fucks more, Pokemon or Digimon? Um, we'll allow you to mm. pick a side, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna. Yeah. Okay, so um, <laughs> if, if we're gonna talk between Digimon and and Pokemon, I think Pokemon. I personally, I think Pokemon wins in like the uh sort of longevity and in the cuteness that like just the raw cuteness of the design of most of those cr- their creatures oh yeah but yeah, sure. even though i was never like the biggest fan of digimon personally the i i really respect digimon's like respect for its own lore see digimon t- seems to really have stories that it wants to tell and like i don't know there's like some wholesome stuff in there and i know a lot of people who really like digimon mm. and had like a, a serious major positive effect on them I'm pretty cool with that. Like, so I, was, I gotta say, I, I think... was a very, I was very into Digimon. Um, yeah. Like, I, my, my, my take on it is that Digimon Pokemon... Guy than Pokemon guy? Mm, the, I was, good, I right? was a Digimon guy longer than I was a Pokemon guy. Is what I'll say. All right. All right. So hold on. I, was, I think I like go. went way harder into Pokemon. Whoa. Yeah. It's going so loud. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta control this audio. Oh, uh, sorry if there's any feedback because of the way my audio setup mm. is right now. I'm probably gonna have to watch this, these videos over my, um, over my speakers. If it's getting picked up, tell me and I'll try to come up with a new solution. Um, but okay. like, okay. yeah, I don't know. Uh, the alternative is perhaps no, no to uh, D- Discord or something. But yeah, I'll, 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 hopefully this won't get picked up by mm. the audio or by my, if it, okay. my mic. Yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. Um, if it does, there's always like push to talk or something like that. that, that you yeah, I could that. do. Oh yeah, I could do push to yeah, talk. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. true. Um, but um, like yeah. part of like I was like curious like about because like 
Um, I, like, I'm starting to, like, um, uh, I'm getting, like, like, the odd invite to, like, be on, like, a debate thing, and, like, mm -hmm. James has been on a few debates, I don't debate, like, we make oh, yeah. video essays, we both We've spend, done... like, a month yeah. writing a video, and then, like, do that, I don't, like, like, I I've gotten invites where it's, like, I don't even know the topic ahead of time, it's just gonna be get sprung oh, on me, I'm, like, that. yeah, I've done that's that for not, I, I can't do that, uh, so, like, I, I was wondering if you, like, uh, have any advice for people who are, uh, uh, for video essayists like us in terms of how to how to debate so uh damn um okay so actually i could probably <laughs> i could probably talk about this a lot i've done a lot of debate i do a lot of debate and on friday i'm doing one of those such debates where the topics are not going to be given ahead of time it's very blood sporty it's very much um yeah mm. you know it's one of those things um and uh you know Okay, so a couple of things. One, you have to remember whenever you're going into a debate where especially ones that are like the internet blood sports, debate me, debate me, debate me, that kind of thing, the the mm -hmm. beef me, that kind of thing. When you're doing the uh, the beef me kind of stuff online, uh, you have to remember that um, you're never actually really talking to the opponent that you're talking to. And that sounds like... Um, that sounds like it's like a bad, like I'm telling people to be bad faith. No, of course you want to engage with the things that they're saying to you, but the people that you're really actually trying to reach are out in the audience and, and you have to keep that in mind. So one thing that happens is uh, that I see happen a lot of times, and this is specifically for like people who are coming from like the bread tube uh, SAS background is that they will have a whole lot of cor super correct knowledge and they'll have the facts and figures on hand they'll have they'll have research whatever even if and sometimes even for topics that they didn't get to prep for they'll know a whole bunch about a topic but being able to take the audience through that in a in a hectic environment is key you have to be able to line things up so that it, it makes sense because um in a, in a video essay you can sit there and you can go okay here's the prerequisite information that helps you understand this conclusion but you have to super compress that down when you're doing an online debate you have to be able to figure out a way to um and sometimes it does require some dirty tricks sometimes you have to kind of uh in your spiel just kind of assert the pre-information that you're confident in and just say okay if people really want to check me on this they can go fucking look it up but Here's the stuff that you need to know, and here's the answer to the argument. Here's where you can find more. Ba 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 ba. That's something you have to be able to do. Mm. Something that happens a lot is like I've seen a lot of people because because of course I've been uh, debating. It's been, I mean, I used to do a lot more of the panel style and the two v twos and the whatevers. I'm pretty into the debate stuff. Um, I've done a lot of them, and I have uh, had a lot of conversations or been on panels with uh, people who come from like a video essay background, and. I think something that gets taken for granted is like the ability to set up and control like your narrative uh, un un uninterrupted and unheckled. And so you have to be able to do things super concise in a way that makes sense to the audience, not just the people that you're talking to across from you. And in fact, I would argue it's almost more important to make something make sense to the audience than it is to make something make sense to the whatever conservative that you're going up against. That's my advice, I guess. It's kind of complicated, <laughs> but, but yeah. Yeah, I've never no, I mean, been a conservative. Yeah. We we've only debated other leftists okay. on you know the minutiae or like liberals, but yeah, or or yeah, yeah or libs. That's right. But uh, yeah, I uh, I guess like what what I what I found with myself is that like I will just like let the other person talk mm -hmm. and like they'll yeah. Like, they talk we're also like, Canadians, yeah, not yeah, just bread Canadians, tubers, but so we're like polite Canadians. So we like. Bread. No, no, no. You interrupt. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. And then before you know, the person's talking for like ten minutes, and I'm like. Oh, I feel like I should say something, you know. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. But there is like sort of like a I don't know like there, there's an annoying thing when you're watching debate where people are just talking over each other so much and like you know it yeah. kind of the message gets lost and everything. Like, is there a way to I don't know like strike a good balance there? Do you know what I mean? Um, you mean like between like the the blood and the and the like. And the like meat that you want to deliver is that what you're kind of trying to get at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But between the blood and the meat, is there yeah, there definitely <laughs> is. Um, there is a difference. But like the thing is, is like okay, so I c I've always sort of branded myself when it comes to debate as a bit of a pit fighter, um, meaning that I am not afraid to engage in in those juicy, juicy ad homs, which is what people always call it. Mm. But um, you know, I like to say, as I always tell people, it's not an ad hom if I insult you and destroy your argument. It's only an ad hom if I insult you 
for my argument. <laughs> so you see, that's the difference. Um, but I do think that's important. Like, um, <laughs> there are, uh, so there's two things. One is like, when it comes to the whole, like, like letting people roll over you, I always, and I've, I've said this to specifically, you know, um, uh, mostly other fe like femme creators who have a really hard time getting a word in edgewise on a lot of these panels, which are mostly male dominated. It is a constant issue. It's almost a meme. We, we talk about it all the time on my channel. I've gone on pa on whole panels devoted to talk about how unpleasant the debate experience is for most femme creating uh, femme presenting people like content creators. Um, but you have to just, you have to learn to be able to elbow in and you can't feel bad for like, uh, for like if you, uh, interrupt somebody or if you, you know, do a, uh, if they get mad about interrupting slightly because they're just going off on some tear and you're like, I need to be able to say this. You have to, it, it does require a, a bit of being rude, um, because you have to be willing to interrupt people. So that's what I would say. Like, just keep in mind that that's a part of the culture. If you're in the debate thing, people are going to get mad if you're, if you're like constantly interrupting or if you're like being super obnoxious or refusing to listen to the mod or whatever. But everybody knows that you have to do a little bit of interrupting here and there on these panels because there's like nine people on them. That's for a panel. If you're in like a 2v2, it might be better. If you're in a 1v1, you'll probably have, you know, it'll probably be structured such that you have your own time to talk. But um, for the panels, mm. you have to be able to echo, um, uh, to elbow in. And then to separate the meat and the blood, well, again, um, it, it a lot of this is going to depend on the topic. Some topics are completely screwed for that. Some topics, it is so hard to actually get to the meat on, um, and others it's not. So, for example, one topic that, like, is personally exhausting for me, I don't like to do it, like, I don't really like to do it, but I do it sometimes, is debating trans issues. Trans issues are, in my opinion, super, super easy to present a positive argument for, for why trans people should be treated with respect, for why trans people should, you know, pronouns should be respected, for why they should have access to healthcare. Super, super easy to lay that out. And so, what you need to do is you need to get the core information out, and then you need to make sure that the blood sells it. Because the people will come, the the, the, the mm. crowds will swarm once the blood mm. goes. And if you can get them in and biting into the meat, I mean, I remember one time, I think one of the best performances I ever did was against this um this just rampant tra transphobe. Um and uh it was it was so funny because I got him so mad that basically all he did was make little like Pepe <laughs> posting like, oh, sarcasm, like trans jokes and like attack helicopter esque nonsense. And I was like uh, and, and that looks really bad. And he was super mad. And so it was really easy for me to just be like, you know, you're sitting here, uh, like mm. smugly chuckling with your recycled jokes. And, and I actually bring, bring the people yeah. something to learn about the people in the audience who are listening to me are learning something. You're just regurgitating this old trash. And that like will snap the audience into attention. And hopefully they'll walk away with a couple of those arguments that are damn near, damn near impossible for them to, to push back against. It's very hard for them to push back against it without just sounding like a callous asshole. And if you if you point that out, if you expose them for being that, people don't like to feel like they're a ca calloused asshole. They don't want to mm. agree with the calloused asshole unless the calloused asshole is cool. So if you deny him the ability to be cool, then you got it. And that's how you deliver the meat through the blood, in my opinion. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, this is useful. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, definitely yeah. like... Uh, uh, the best way to fight fascists is to make them look silly. And yeah, I tend to yeah. agree, mm. um, like, for sure. I, I like how you called John Doyle like a silly boy or, or whatever you said. Mm. He is a thing. silly boy. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm. Like the thing is, he really <laughs> yeah, make is. Make them look just like ridiculous. Yeah, don't make them look cool. That's super the problem. Yeah, you can't make them look cool or you know. No, like even like the Nazis like intentionally designed their like the whole like are we the baddies thing they intentionally designed their uniforms to be like the cool evil guys like yeah, they like they wanted that... to look scary but you could like, but the thing is they're so not... clownish yeah they're so clownish and the thing but the thing is oh, is that it's so easy to make them look silly it is and and it's that's very effective and the thing is they always lose their cool the, uh, the more fashy somebody is the more the, mo the easier it is to get them to lose their cool once it's been point out point out that they're totally just a, a, an embarrassing fraud and if you get them to do that they'll lose their cool they won't make arguments they'll just they'll basically end up like that one clip of like richard spencer where he's like people like you are supposed to be looking <laughs> up at people like me and it's like and i've literally had that happen multiple times on streams where uh, some some That's like you know mask on or pseudo mask on fashion is just 100% losing their shit screaming into the mic and I'm just sitting there smugly looking it sells well 
they don't like it they look bad so yeah i think that's a i think that mocking them is effective and also pointing out that like these people like nick fuentes and um and uh and um john doyle these literal like embarrassing children um yeah i one thing i like to make fun of nick nick fuentes about is nick fuentes first of all he whines about getting canceled all the time which is like dude come on you know you don't you want to be the strong doge and not the little sad crying doge well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but no, instead, uh, uh, what I, I like to counts anymore, but he's one of the cool people. Who, like he's one of my favorite people to have blocked me on Twitter. Oh, oh, Nick Fuentes. Yeah. Nick Fuentes is off Twitter now. He got banned. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, Twitter but blocked him. yeah, Twitter blocked the, the, the blocker becomes the blocky. Um, oh, I still have Dave, Dave Rubin. <laughs> Dave Rubin. True. Uh, Dave blocked me a long time ago before I was even a content creator. Oh. I got blocked by Riley Grace for Sean. <laughs> well, that's not hard these days. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. uh oh. No, that's uh, yeah. Oh, no, you guys, do you even know the, the 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 massive drama? Oh, I had massive drama with RGR. Like, arguably the Is definitive the drama. King versus King at Pride? Oh, thing, no, or? long before that. Oh, no. Long before, oh, before that. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Ooh. Man, that might be a story. I, I could I could tea spill. I don't really care at this point. If you want to. If you want to hash that. through. Hey, let's uh, lay out the fucking tablecloth and spill tea. Oh, yeah, all right. Sure. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Uh. So. Okay, let me do one thing real quick. First of all, let me just, I want to just try something and then I'll, I'll spill all the tea. But first I want to try getting this up. <laughs> Video capture share. I need to try and, and, and grab. Whoa, that's not correct. I'm blowing oh, up. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Screen. Are you just, are you trying to yeah. uh, fix up your. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to get it how to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that's not good. I'm, I'm giving. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Well, um, we've, we've, I think you've, you've also been blocked by RGR, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, yeah, were you talking to me? recently, though. We were mutuals for a while. For a while, she was, like, following me, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I feel like the kink at Pride thing was just very, like, people took it so personally. And it was just, like, I don't know why people, like, yeah, okay, it's, like, a, you know, debate that can be had. I'm definitely, like, pretty firmly on one side of it, uh, the correct side. And, uh, yeah. but, like, <laughs> that mean that, like, anyone who disagrees with me, I'm going to, like, block them. You know? Yeah. Like, or, no, or, no, like, and... It, to consider them a total piece of shit and yet it seemed like like a lot of well people... i mean it was even before that the whole like eat the rich thing because she was like like was originally she was yeah. like anyone who was like a socialist you're like her her, her gotcha which that, is the yeah. funniest like lamest gotcha was uh okay let's say that um you like a, there's a socialist revolution and a property owner refuses to give up the means of uh like the, their factory uh yeah. what do you do you don't have an answer except doing violence to them in some way and it's like yeah, if we change the law and <laughs> someone breaks a law, eventually something bad oh, yeah. can happen to them. That is, yeah. congratulations, you're a fucking you successfully law student. How do you not out, understand yeah. this very basic thing? Yeah, um, the, the, there's, God, there's so much I could talk about with this. You know what, I, I'm going to try and figure out the video thing in a minute, and then I'll tell you this, because I don't want to be, okay. I don't want it to be boring and whatever. Do you mind if real quick, do you mind if real quick before we get into the heat of that, if I just hit the restroom real quick, is that fine? Hit it. Oh, go ahead. All right, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. be. I will be right back, y'all. Uh, by the I'm way, gonna go, uh, plug your gonna please plug your beer, yeah. yeah plug your channel too. Yeah, uh, let's let's yeah. plug our let's plug our stuff. And also, uh, um, e either before or after you get back, you should plug your stuff on our channel too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll do. All right. Yeah. Uh, beer, uh, okay. After you get back. Yeah. Um. What's up, everyone? What's up, uh, Demon Mama people? This is be for people on our stream. This is being streamed on Demon Mamas as well. But uh. Uh, my name's Sam. I run a YouTube channel called We're in Hell, and uh, this uh, th James and I are uh, two, uh, the two parts of the Goat and the Goblin Twitch channel, where we uh, are two leftists who like to hang out with uh, cool uh, content creators that we like and uh, shoot the shit and also show them horrible cringe stuff. Come hang out. Uh, check us out. It's a good time. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we basically just, like, clown on dummies. Uh, also check out my, uh, uh, our, our, both our YouTube channels, uh, We're in Hell and Chill Goblin. And yeah, James. yeah, yeah. Yeah, ch check me out. I'm Chill Goblin on YouTube and Twitter. And, uh, yeah, no, very, very excited for this stream. Um, you know, big fan of, uh, Demon Mama from way back in the, her debate with Vosh one month ago, uh, or so. Uh, <laughs> the, the kick of pride stuff but um yeah no she she's a she said james looks like a snowman someone says what no i don't wait huh explain <laughs> yourself that dog. i can kind of see it like it's like it's not snowman you look like um who's that like old like cartoon <laughs> character that's like an icicle that's brought to life and has like the beard 
Oh, uh, and, like the very okay. sharp features. Oh, I don't, I don't I'm know. About, it's uh, like a very old cartoon yeah, character. Okay. I, I can't remember the name, but it's. <laughs> oh, it's a cartoon. You... So, okay, you gotta find this cartoon, cartoon character that's like made of ice about. and like he has like icicle stuff. Oh shit! Oh, is it the like Mister? Uh, is it that stop motion thing? Like not the Rudolph one, but the same people. The Mister. I don't know. Uh, Coldmeister or whatever it is. Oh, is I that the Rankin Bass or whatever? Like yeah, 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 yeah. I've been told I look like that guy, but usually when I have my beard shaved because I have like the same kind of pointy shin. I don't know. Hmm. Cold miser. Yeah, yeah. Miser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got, got elven yeah, features. Yeah, yeah, you guys know. About <laughs> all right, all right. Um, no, I, yeah, yeah, I got, I've gotten that before. Yeah. <laughs> that's our, that's our stuff. Um, Demon Mama. Uh, yeah. T- uh, t- uh, tell us about yourself. Tell us. Uh, plug your plug your channel. Uh, yeah, your pronouns and um, uh, fun fact about yourself. Yeah. Sure thing. Uh, so, oh, a fun fact. Okay, I can do some cool things like that. So, all right. First off, my name is Demon Mama. Uh, she, her pronouns. Uh, I uh, run a political edutainment show that's demon themed. Imagine that. Name Demon Mama. It's demon themed. Uh, over, you can find all of my links to all of my social media right on the homepage at demonmama.com. Um, you can watch the live show, demonmama.com forward slash live. I'm on YouTube. Most of my content goes up on YouTube. I don't do a whole lot of like super prepared like essays or anything like that but i do uh do segments on my show that i do a lot of research for and then those get cut up into uh videos that we put out on the youtube channel so if you want to keep up with everything follow the youtube and of course feel free to follow me on twitter i post some uh, bangers i'm pretty good at that kind of stuff so um yeah would love to would love to have you be one of the imps which is the name for my lovely fans um so yeah oh, uh, i'm really happy to be on here and oh. if, you, if you want a fun fact about me I'm going to show you a real fun fact. Okay. So, okay, that sounds fun. So, are either of you familiar with the uh, cult known as Heaven's Gate? Yes. Okay, so you know yeah. Heaven's Gate then. It's suicide cult, um, mass suicide, 33 people died. Um, this right mm-hmm. here, this rock right here, this unassuming rock, is a piece of the destroyed foundation of the mansion where they kill, where the mass suicide happened. And I Whoa. actually went and found that location. It was demolished. It is not easy to find online. I went and found the building, and I found the rubble, and I got a piece for myself. And uh, it's a cursed artifact. Yeah. It's certainly a cursed artifact, but it was a fun journey of doing the research and going and finding it and, and having to scope everything out using old photos to try and figure out exactly where it was located. Because, I mean, it, without, like, I was, I'm not, like, a local to that area. So, like, I had to go, you know, there was probably people who lived there who knew, knew where it was. But uh, they couldn't sell the building, obviously, afterwards. It was basically treated as if, as if it was haunted. So, uh, yeah, they just destroyed it, like, many, many years ago. And pieces still remain, as it turns out. And I have one of them. Super cool. Cool. That's a fun fact. Hell yeah, that's sick. Kind of a dark that's one. That's a very fun fact. Yeah, but it's fun. I think that that's the best cool, fun fact cool that we've one. gotten. Like, that's the most fun Other fact. people will give shit like, um, my favorite food is pizza. <laughs> 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 You're both in the water. <laughs> oh, man, um, you must, like, crush with that fun fact at, like, you know, corporate icebreakers and shit. And yeah, I don't do like, those no more. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been in a corporate yeah, icebreaker. Yeah. Jeez. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> I've been out of the corporate loop for a while. I did used to work in uh, in sales, but that was a long, that was an, that was the old hey, me. me too. James did too. Oh, really? Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The dark days. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. So what industry did you work in sales in? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I was doing B2B. I, so- okay. I sold um, a few different things. I sold Shopify for a while. Oh, to, interesting. You know, re- retail businesses. I sold SEO to yeah, uh, where I made most of my money was uh, selling SEO to uh, search engine optimization to lawyers, dentists, uh, and contractors. That was like the big money thing I was in for a while. Uh, and, you know, I've, I, I've done a few different sales gigs over the years. But, uh, yeah, I, hard to reconcile that, I find, with being a leftist. So I don't it's, think I'll go back. It's definitely hard. Uh, I had <laughs> a hard time staying. I wasn't even a leftist, like a leftist when I was in sales. So my background oh, no, yeah, no, um, yeah. was like, I mean, I grew up super conservative i literally grew up in a cult um which you know that that might explain why heaven's I have... gate no not in heaven's gate no i grew up in a, an evangelical <laughs> cult. this stone is from my house yeah it's from my house no i mean if i was well the funny fun funny funny thing is um the person that i went to get that stone with um was actually in contact with one of uh, i think there are three surviving members of heaven's gate and 
two of them are still upholding portions of the of the of the cult's mission on earth basically they will if you can get a hold of them they're not easy to get a hold of but they can actually give you uh, something with ufos right well, um yeah was there was like a uh, ufo thing they believed that there was a uh a mothership as they called it that was um hiding itself it was cloaking itself behind the um ha- the uh, halibop or yeah the halibop comet and um they believed that in order to uh like sort of Basically, the way that I would describe it is they believe that humans were basically like chrysalises, that, that humans yeah, were you could like... turn into an alien. Yeah, not that you would really turn in, but that if your soul was um, appropriately readied, that you could basically crack out of your, of your shell and ascend up and catch the... the uh, you could go up and catch the, um, the mothership. The and spaces. Yeah, so yeah. It's it's really it's actually I've done a ton of research on Heaven's Gate. It's super fascinating. They were actually a very very strange and interesting cult um, because unlike a lot of other cults that happened at the time, that while the while it concluded in death, it did not conclude in a shootout with the Feds, which is what most of the other similar uh, cults of that type <laughs> did do. Um, you know, you've got it's like, all about Waco, setting achievable but... goals. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's funny because like they preempted it, that with the mass suicide. Yeah, the mass suicide. It's very weird too because um, if you go and you watch videos, I know we're going off on a tangent, but it's it's kind of an interesting one. Um, no, yeah. no, no, no. If you go and watch videos, uh, for the Heaven's Gate cult, like the people were really happy. Like they were super. They were like like uncharacteristically um like unabused. Like, there was certainly a lot of emotional manipulation on, like, the cult level, obviously. But they actually, like, they didn't involve themselves in all kinds of, like, um, extremely aggressive indoctrination. They were more or less a uh, come-and-go-as-you-so-please um, type of cult. Um, and the, nobody was, there was, there was no, like, order to uh, kill themselves. So, like... They said, like, basically, the cult leader was like, "All right, it's time to go. If you want to go, this is how we do it. We're gonna, we're gonna, t- you're gonna take this poison, and then you're gonna put this cloak over your face, and then you'll ascend." And people chose to do that. It wasn't like Jonestown, where like children were being given poison. It was like, and and yeah, because yeah. of that, it makes it a very, it makes it a kind of an outlier of the big famous cults of that time, because even though obviously there's all kinds of um terrible like social manipulation that's involved in any cult it does stand out as one that was um weirdly pacifistic and uh in that that sounds strange to say when you're talking about a cult that did a mass suicide but again it wasn't like jonestown yeah they didn't shoot anybody they didn't no, shoot really any any uh any and that doesn't make them like a better thing it's just interesting it's very interesting no, 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 the way no, that it operated yeah. differently um the the cult leader uh marshall applewhite was um by all accounts a a warlock you know he was able to just <laughs> charisma his way into just enthralling yeah. people and and many cult leaders are known to be like that but most other cult leaders will have like armed enforcers and all these other things these torture regime regi- uh, like uh regimes that they put people through and whatever and that wasn't really the case with heaven's gate he just kind of he kind of did it on like a 20 20 charisma check like just nat twenty, apparently. So kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. I sick. I just uh, looked it up on Wikipedia. Well, I said that, that's fucking sick. That's not a, sick. Um, that's that's bad. Yeah. But yeah. You, you get it. <laughs> there's a interesting. Uh, someone called nine one one with a very casual rep- like they tipped them off mm-hmm. about the uh, the mass suicide. Yep. Uh, the transcript of the call is the caller says yes I'd like to report an anonymous tip. Who do I talk to? Sheriff's Department. Okay, this is regarding what? Call it. This is regarding a mass suicide. I can give you the address. <laughs> That's what they uh, called in. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, I think if I remember show, correctly, um, the person who called that in was one of the one of the members who was designated to stay behind, and they were like Rio we D'Angelo. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's it's super super fascinating. Uh, very very weird. Very dark, but super mm. fascinating. Um. So yeah. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah, cults, wow. Eh? Yeah, cults really are something that is a, you know, having grown up in a cult, uh, they're a bit of an interesting topic for me. They're something that I'm pretty fascinated right. with and try to learn a lot about. Um, 
And of course, if you, you want about um, go for it. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say if you want me to talk about that, I have a whole video I did on it, but I'm more than happy to talk about that if that's a topic that your audience would be interested in. I know a lot of people tend to be like want to pick my brain about it. I'm perfectly cool with that if that's something you're interested in. Um, I'm cool with whatever. So, um, I was just gonna ask. Uh, a lot of people have um sort of called the QAnon movement mm -hmm. a cult, uh, and I don't know. I feel like that's like a valid thing to call <laughs> the QAnon movement. Yeah. But I'm curious on what your take is on that as, you know, someone who's interested in cults and also, you know, a former part of it. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of cult elements to QAnon. Um, and the thing that's interesting about QAnon is that um, it's kind of it's kind of come to represent a certain type of like, I guess, evolution in the way that cults f unfold in the modern era. Because mm, they're cult. Yeah, it's like it, yeah, it's like a, a neo cult in that like um while all kinds of cults have used mass media to get their word out, you know, uh I mean even Heaven's Gate, Heaven's Gate was known for um sending these videos, these like striking shocking videos that would then they knew would get played on the mainstream news, you know, and that that would get bring inevitably bring people to their cult and it did. You know, the broadcasting mm. of that let them reach um, the vulnerable people who are vulnerable to that type of rhetoric or whatever, and also establish themselves as a place for people to come find them and whatever. So there's been a lot of cults that have used mass media in that way. Another one that's uh, talked about a lot is uh, Om Shinrikyo in Japan. I don't know if you're familiar with Om Shinrikyo. Um, uh, no, I don't know that one. Yeah, Om Shinrikyo is, was a, uh, they carried out a sarin gas attack on uh, a Tokyo subway that was really, really infamous. Um, this was, um, I think, in the early 2000s. Let me see. Let me double check on the date on that one. Gas, Tokyo. It was in... Wait, here, What when was it? Oh, sorry, it was in 1995, um, carried out by Om Shinrikyo. And, like, Om Shinrikyo was this very strange Japanese cult that uh, basically argued that this um, the, the founder was a reincarnation of Jesus Christ who came to Japan to like uh I don't know build a new church or whatever and um they had an anime they had like a a anime made for them a cartoon of like <laughs> oh, okay. and like literally like I mean quite literally like it is exactly what you think it was it's like you watch it and you're like what the fuck this is like kind of based as a tv show like the dude, uh, the main guy is, like, presented as a hero who has all kinds of, like, super abilities and stuff, and he fights some people in it. It's like a straight-up anime. And that was, um, <laughs> and of course, people became fixated on that, and that got their name out, and they got tons and tons of people involved. Wait, wait, was there, was there like, a fan service episode? Um, I don't think they, That's I don't I'm actually, very curious I, think, about. I can't remember how many episodes they actually made of it, but, um, you can actually watch it on YouTube. It's on <laughs> YouTube. You can watch the Om Shinrikyo anime, um, on YouTube, and it's just... It's wild. They had multiple, so they were involved in multiple attacks. It, it it's really messed up. They were like hyper accelerationists. They believed that they needed to do these violent acts in order to bring about the end. Um, very very fascinating. But anyway, to tie that back to the question about Q, there are there's a lot of similarities between the movement around Q and the movement that formed around Om Shinrikyo. Um, and if you want to learn like a whole bunch about that, I highly recommend following um, uh, Sarah Hightower. Um, on Twitter, who is uh, a extremely well-researched um, uh, researcher and uh, sort of cult specialist who talks about, uh, who specialized in talking about Om Shinrikyo, talks about these connections a lot. The interesting thing about QAnon is that because it, it is all, it's so internet focused and it, you, and it rides the airwaves of already existing um, propaganda, is that they're reaching people that would have never been reachable before. They're reaching like lonely rural old folks um they're reaching you know lonely rural young folks who just only have an internet connection and nothing else and it means that there's ba that there's like there's a removed layer because um with cults like heaven's gate if you're if your family member starts behaving weird and like hanging out with all these weird people wearing strange robes you kind of go hey is everything okay and you might check in with your family and there might be something that stops them from getting into the cult well, that's not there anymore it happens all on the internet they just sit there on their computer um going deeper and deeper and deeper until one day they're a q head and they are at the uh the insurrect the capital insurrection and that is a um that's a 
really weird uh, thing that we're grappling with. I do think that there are a lot of cult elements in Q. I think there are some ways in which it doesn't perfectly map to a cult, um, but there mm-hmm. are a there are a there is enough red flags that I think that we should take it seriously as a as a potential cult movement because mm-hmm. it, it does have those. Yeah. Uh, you know, it lacks a central figure yeah. in the same way, um, but yeah. in a sort of horrifying twist that central figure has become like a mask that can be worn by basically anybody. And so there's like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's very strange to, to think about how it might mutate in the future. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like... I, mean, I think we were, uh, we, we, we were like, looking at something. I think it might have been uh, Caleb Moffin's book. Oh, my God. <laughs> the other day. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Where he, we're he, like, he, like, he, he's not a cult he, because people don't change their name. That was his argument. Yeah, no he like he used an on. incredibly myopic like definition of cults, where it's like it doesn't involve hypnosis and people don't change their names, so it's not a cult. We yeah, we read a very like <laughs> a, 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 a pretty large <laughs> chunk of that book on stream, and that was in retrospect too much of that book on stream. <laughs> too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I I saw but, some uh, snippets and that was enough for me. Uh, look, I, I'm not the <laughs> I, I'm not really a big fan of Caleb Maupin. Caleb Maupin's not really a fan of people like me. Uh, he doesn't really like. He doesn't really, really seem to like, like it. The, he doesn't really seem to like trans <laughs> people very much. Yeah. Remember the show. Yeah, yeah. So well, I'm glad you. Yeah. I'm glad you all were willing to uh, sort of throw yourselves on that grenade because uh, I'm happy that I don't have to put myself through that uh, intellectual torture. Um, yes, that's it's, uh, pretty much what it was. Uh, there were some laughs, and there was a lot of just, oh god, what the hell is this guy talking about? Yeah. But, I would uh, say it's probably the worst book I've ever read. The worst. <laughs> the worst one ever. Damn. It's a rough one. Damn. Well, wow. I mean, um, hey. but uh, I don't want to get too far off the topic. Yeah. I believe there was some uh, some tea that was about to. Be oh spread. yeah, I can do that. Yeah, uh, I can tell you about mm. that. If y'all have had, okay, so y'all are familiar with. I'm sure you are all familiar with the latest chapter of this uh, this whole kink at pride thing. Um, and yes. Uh, yes. yeah, Again, so your uh, your your talk with your with Bosch on that. Yeah, I did. I had a debate with Bosch on that. It was pretty intense. I was pretty frustrated. Um, but you know, it it turned out fine, and you know, Bosch and I are fine. Like it's whatever. Um, I'm a debatey. The he's debatey. We know. You know, we're big. We're big. We can handle it. We can we can take a few punches here and there. Um, and uh, and yeah. Uh, I think the kink at pride thing was just totally unhinged, and uh, people were behaving like I I can't even I can't even believe. Like again, like I've been. I've been out as as trans for eleven years now, and uh, so I've I've had the kink at pride discourse has looped its way through many many times. I've heard it many times, and this year was just I don't know what the heck happened. It mutated into this ridiculous moral uh, panic, and and anyway, uh, so I, I guess you could argue. I think I think it could be argued to use a a little uh, a weasel word there. It could be argued that the setup. For the RGR Kink It Pride um, event was uh, our falling out, um, which was really severe and came out of kind of nowhere. Um, so basically, what happened was uh, originally I had invited RGR on, uh, like like RGR showed up in my chat. We, our communities had like um, a pretty nice relationship. Like a, a week, like uh, we'd done, I'd done, cr- we'd done crossover content, like. I'd babysat, I've, I've, I had babysat her stream before, just like, you know, somebody raids into you and then you raid them back out if they got to go do something. Um, so I did a stream babysit mm-hmm. for like 250 people. It was super fun. Um, and then RGR came by and was like uh, making some jokes about like being anti-furry or something. And so like I, I, I always make a big, a big deal about being super pro furry rights. Um, and, uh, and uh, like, like, I think the term furry rights is silly, but I do believe that furries should be treated with respect. They're people, you know? Sure. Um, don't, don't so, yeah, and absolutely. Or, yeah. Nice and also, of course, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, I very much think, I like to think about animal rights and, and animal, uh, treatment as well. So, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, the, uh, so the debate started like that, like a joke debate about, about furries, and then it turned into an argument about, like a minor argument, like a, a, a total goofball argument about King Kong versus Godzilla, because that was right before the King Kong Godzilla movie came out. And then uh, we finally started talking about, I can't even remember what the third topic was, something else. And it was like three hours into this conversation we'd been having when all of a sudden something came up that, that, that brought us to the topic of like gender self-ID. 
and I am a huge proponent of the self-identification model of gender. You say you are what you say you are, and there's no reason why we shouldn't take that in good faith. There's no way that we, we shouldn't be doing like brain scans to find out what somebody, quote unquote, really is. Gender right. is a social construct. Yeah. And uh, like a name, you know, the way the example that I used in this in this conversation and also like since then is like I look at it like a name, you know, um, when somebody says, hi, my name is John. Um, we don't go. No, it isn't. What's your real name? John, if that's your real name. Nobody Let actually in your brain, John. Yeah, where's the John gene? <laughs> Nobody does that. Mm, like you have and, and a also... Herald brain. Yeah. John. Yeah, exactly. What should You're I say it. Herald? Yeah. And it was like it was like it's like that whole thing. And it's like, I don't know, like that doesn't that's not how we do na like names are a similar construct. You declare your own identity. And sure, there are some contexts, like for example, a legal name, which is something that's like uh, imposed by the state for the purposes of like I don't know keeping track of people or whatever you can talk about that whole structure which sure but that's a different thing we recognize that's different than like your name people's people come up with their name all the time and people change their nicknames another example that I bring up with this is like screen names how many of us have more than one screen name um sure you know well what yeah. what ended up happening is it ended up with uh with RGR saying a, a, a sort of faded line that's been memed in, into uh, into the stratosphere at this point, which is, uh, you, are you ready for my hottest trans take? And I was like, uh-oh. And I literally said that. I was like, uh-oh. And it ended up basically being an argument that, like, uh, what, it, what it amounted to was that I am a bad representative of trans people to the public because I push for a self-ID model. And according to her... That is illogical because there is something essential to gender, even if it's not like a gene or something that we can scan. And I said, that seems like a semantic distinction that, you know, doesn't really make a whole lot of, of sense to me. At the end of the day, the structures we build should treat gender as a social construct because that's the better way to do it. That's the way that um, that everything goes. You know, that's the way that we do these things anyway. So why shouldn't we encourage that? That is the most, like, it has the best outcomes. And then it turned into, like, she got really, really mad. And I tried to stop the conversation, uh, like, three or four times. I literally was like, look, I don't want to have this. But I didn't want to kick somebody who I considered a friend off and all this. It blew up into a really bloody argument. And it got so bad that, like, uh, like at the end, like, like, she was literally screaming at me. And I was like, I called her cringe. And she got, like, really mad. And, um... And then, like, she hung up the call um, on me and said I'm a stupid dumb fuck and then hung up. And then, like, I got really mad. And admittedly, I did call her a Christ cuck afterwards, which is probably not very nice. Um, that was not fair of me to do. <laughs> That's I can pretty own, funny, I would I, say. Yeah, I can, own, I can own my insults. And then I ended my stream. But what ended up happening was that she did not end her stream. She proceeded to begin pulling people in from her community um, and just lighting them up on the stream. And, um, well, like, like people who agreed with you. Yeah. People who were agreeing with me, people who were even just mildly disagreeing with her. And I, I was like, oh, you know, wow. my, my, my head mod like popped in and was like, you know, we should probably wrap stream here because I was like literally on the verge of tears. Cause it was a really intense argument. You know, there's a personal issue and I wasn't expecting it. It was like three hours into a meme debate. And, uh, Mm. And like, I was like, okay, all right, I'm done. I'm off. I'm not going to rage out here. Good night, everybody. I'll see you next stream. Ended stream. RGR continued onwards to do this. And, it, and, and basically what ended up happening was I ended up like going radio silent for like six days uh, because the next day, like after blowing up on, on her community, and everything like uh, the next day, fucking this dude named destiny. I don't know if you know who he is. But uh, Destiny was like, hey, Never heard of him. hey, you want to come on? <laughs> and and the thing is, there was contention within her own community. Um, there was a lot of tension within her own community because uh, a lot of people in her community really uh, don't feel safe around Destiny's community. A lot of them have had their own run-ins with it. And they were like, look, we should let this thing die. We've uh, like I was not I was like taking a back seat. And my mods, my editor had said, we're not putting that segment up. We want this fucking drama to die. This was a messy fight. Let's just let it go. And her team was telling her to do the same. Um, and there's no, there was no overlap between our teams. That's a myth that some people say that there was like people out from my team in her server. That wasn't the case. Um, there was nobody. There just was people just, who wanted the best for both of you. 
Yeah, it was, well, there was this yeah. mutual agreement. And I said, like, I explicitly told, I said, like, hey, look, because one of her mods, uh, one of her admins, not even mods, one of her admins approached me. It was like, hey, listen, we're going to try and we're going to try and talk to RGR. We don't think this thing should be put up. We feel like this is only going to just like be used by right wingers to say, oh, look, the trans people are fighting. haha. And so uh, let's let's you know, can we agree that I'm like, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. It was a stupid debate. I wasn't planning for it anyway. Well, um, uh, Riley decided to post the video anyway, um, which actually caused her editor to resign because he put a line and said, I'm not doing it. I will not edit it. If you post this like I, I'm going to be very mad. It got edited by her and then posted, and then uh, Destiny invited wow. her, and Destiny oh. immediately invited her on after she posted the video, and that was when the editor resigned and a number of the mod team resigned. Um, and what ended up happening was Riley ended up going on Destiny and doing like an eight-hour stream where she was just ranting about me all day long. She went on with Destiny, and and De and Destiny has a bone to pick with me. The dude hates my fucking guts. He literally, actually, literally said that. Uh, he said he hates my fucking that's, guts. That speaks well of you. Yeah, yeah, I think. I think yeah, no, that uh, at least in our our stream, that's uh, yeah, yeah, and um, and so uh, so yeah, so they had like this extended conversation. I think they talked three times over the course of the day while Destiny was reacting to uh the video of the debate, and the, it was uh, interestingly maliciously edited. Um, not only did it not include, so first of all, it was framed uh, as though I had set this up as an argument and not that like I had invited Riley on from the chat, from Riley appearing in the chat and just coming on my show and us having an impromptu discussion that kind of went bad. It was not like an organized thing, but it was presented as though it was a, uh, a, like a structured debate. And it also cut in at this one part where like we were talking back and forth and like mildly criticizing, um, I was like mildly criticizing some, um, like person who's popular in DGG on twitter and i was just like and it it cut in with me saying that so it sounded like i was just like dunking on like this person from dgg with no for no reason whatsoever that's, um dgg that's destiny that's destiny's server, website that right? yeah that's his website and uh his website? Right, right, right. yeah his website and um and i was like what the fuck and so yeah it started like that and then the whole thing happened and it got really fucking bad so like once destiny got involved first of all like they love bomb the shit out of riley's server and it and it broke the mod team the mod team could not handle an influx of literally, like, we're talking thousands of new viewers who were going there. Um, and it was just, like, wild. And then on top of that, like, Destiny was speculating. Some of the things that he said were things like, um, yeah, you know, it makes me feel like uh, this Demon Mama person didn't really think about transition enough before transitioning. Ha 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 ha. Jokes like that. Oh um, he, fr he said I was like, the yeah, he said oh. I was like a, a, I am the worst example of a uh like a piece of shit garbage SJW that makes things worse. I'm like a gift to the republic to the to conservatives because I make trans people look so bad that I'm like a danger to women because I'm so bad for for fighting for women's rights. It was absurd. The level of vitriol was absurd. And then of course, Riley went on to every single show possible. This entire time I was doing I was just sitting back and I was getting so much goddamn harassment. Like I can't even express it. I've never I, in my entire life I had never wow. had that many people um even look at my content the vod like uh, like two days after the vod went up it had like uh the one the destiny did it had like a hundred and something thousand i'm like that's like that many people have never even seen my channel and they're getting their first introduction to me is them being told that i'm like the most evil person ever like a like a a a, a, a disturbing creepy trans person who's disgusting and rep and make and that damages the trans community and um and like uh, and of course it just, it spun out of control from there. Uh, Riley went on like all of this, like basically a PR tour of just like, literally she went onto one of my friend's shows, um, which I think she underestimated like this, this, the friendship that I have with this person. It's like a real actual friendship. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Chud Logic. Uh, love mm -hmm. you, Chud. Yeah. Love you, Chud. But Chud Logic, uh, like had Riley on and, uh, Riley was like, you know, when your friend is, uh, when your friend is being transphobic, you know, I think it's kind of important that you step out and do something about it. And she was like literally trying to pressure him into, into dis, into d disavowing me and all this kind of shit like that. Wait, she was saying that you were being transphobic? Yeah, yeah. That was the end, the end claim. Like literally as the week went on, like I think it was around Thursday, she put out the first video where she formally stated that she believes that I'm a transphobe. Um, because. It's transphobic to not be a trans medicalist? 
Apparently. Well, I mean, see, she wouldn't categorize herself as a trans medicalist. Uh, she never will. And that's OK. Whatever. Uh, I think that I think that that is uh, silly. But yeah, but apparently me, uh, me uh, not living up to her personal standard for what she thinks is good enough for making a trans argument makes me a transphobe. And that's why um, there's a whole bunch that went into this. But yeah, I got I got like uh, so much shit for that. And there's like multiple videos out there saying that, yes, yeah, Demon Mama is a transphobe. Here's the reasons why. I don't care. I don't need to engage like honestly with this type of scum, like all this type of shit, just endless, endless fucking shit. And then finally on Saturday, I put out a response video um, that just basically talked about how um, like Riley literally n nuked her own community um, by the end of the week. Every single uh, founding member of, of her server had left. I'm talking admins, lead mods, people who are were that she would call her personal friends. Server was gone. And the server is nothing the same um, as what it was before, um, which is wild. But then that began, the, 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 the that was sort of the tee up to do the, the kink it pride thing. And of course, my name came up a whole lot during the kink it pride thing, even though I had a very reasonable argument that I laid out uh, very carefully. And that was when um, the mm. the that whole community started uh, accusing me of being a pedophile because apparently my argument yeah. that uh, pride shouldn't be about shame and that um, like a leather daddy uh, wearing a leather jacket is not the same as uh, like a sex act against a child. That's just not reasonable. I don't think that's a reasonable standard at all. I don't think that you can argue that. And apparently that mm. was what got me called a pedophile. So I'm like, yeah, the uh the the uh the rhetoric and the um the 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 fever pitch is is totally everything is totally rational and everything is okay. So yeah, there's the T. There was the blow up that happened before the Damn. blow up. Yeah. yeah. Ouch, Wild. Holy Ouch. shit. Some hot tea. Yeah, and all those ah, videos are gone still. now. It's funny. Like uh she purged her channel and there was like literally <laughs> eight li there was like literally eight videos that she had made on me that were on there. All of them gone. Record gone. Weird. Wonder why. That's odd. So that's odd. odd. That's so that's really random of her. Well, uh, thank you for sharing that, Demon Mama, and critical support to you. Uh, <laughs> you were a hundred percent right. Thanks, I, I appreciate that. No, I would, I, I would uh, say what absolutely, yeah. I um, and I'm so sorry they went through all that abuse. That sounds fucking awful. It it was bad. Like, I mean, it's very strange to me. And like, mm. I don't know. I don't like to. I don't know. I don't want to always talk about it, but it is true that like for the last like seven or eight months my my online presence has been like uh overshadowed by this constant harassment and it is really it's really out, out of it's really out of control and uh Damn. all of this over the it's... fact that i pushed for um uh, self-id but apparently didn't do it good enough and that makes me a transphobe i guess i mean yeah like incredibly reasonable like I, I yeah i think that you're obviously like very in the right there but it like it's it's it is wild to me how much it's like, um, yeah, just how wildly toxic, um, Destiny. I guess it shouldn't be a surprise at all. I've followed Destiny. I mean, the guy's like, like a fucking Kyle Rittenhouse fan. Like, what? what yeah, 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 like yeah. Fucking, like, Pepe. Uh, he's Pepe, though. He no, he's a Pepe. He's Pepe. That's I'm Pepe. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm friends with, uh, I don't know if you would know, uh, Timo, uh, Unlearning Economics. He's, a uh, mm -hmm. bread tuber who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're working on video together, but it's, um, uh, he's talked about how like he made his like first video where he was like uh uh like criticizing philosophy tube and then destiny watched it on stream and so he got a ton of destiny fans like to like start watching him and he's like i'm an anarchist i like i just think that philosophy tube doesn't know what she's talking about when she's talking about like economics that like I disagree yeah, with yeah. basic with Destiny fans on like everything else. Like, yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. Uh, there's this there's this thing that happens. I mean, I could I've talked about this before because it gets me, uh, you know. But I I always get shit every time I talk about it. But whatever at this point, I'm going on. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm debating. He's he yeah. he fucking signed up to debate me on Saturday on Friday. So whatever. I guess it's it's par for the course at this point. I mean, um, plus, I mean, plus yeah. he was just on Twitter calling me fat, which is like, dude, you own me. Yep, I'm fat. True. Love me. All, love Damn. You <laughs> brutal. That's so brutal. Wow. That's how you can tell. Mass, absolute, absolute, uh, yeah, philosopher the king bait, there. The um, yeah. That's how you can that's tell the that if they're, if, they're, if they're calling people fat is, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like... Um, uh, also, I just want to point out uh, as well, Dear Mama, we have uh, 
Dizzy Flyer in our chat who's corroborating a lot of what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, Dizzy Flyer was in the RGR um, server and got kicked out. Yep. Uh, spoke to her lead mod at the time, um, and the lead mod was very sympathetic to Dizzy Flyer. She'd been trying to get RGR to stop, and RGR wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so. Yeah, I if you want the full team, if you that. want like all the details, wow. you gotta watch. You should watch my video on it. It's called the the RGR expose, and it was the. It's like I think mm. it's the only prepared, like formally prepared content where I shot it not on stream. I didn't even stream for that week. I stopped streaming for five for seven days, um, and I just shot this one video where I talk about everything. I have the receipts uh, that were uh, that were offered to me by people who were involved in that. We actually made. Um, in the fallout of that, we made a, a a chat on our server that was basically an Exodus chat because there were so many of the mm. mod. Uh, seriously, there were so many mods, specifically mods and admins, who were getting blasted from that server, and we were like, "Well, listen, like, uh, this is a tough thing. If you're a mod and you put a lot of like, especially like free labor into a server, it can be really hard." So we opened up a a chat that was just mm. for them, for like them and my mods, and like I barely got involved in that at all. Um, and it was just my mm. mods and their mods to just talk about shit and work stuff out. We, that, that, that chat was so, I'm, I'm very happy that we decided to do that because there was a lot of hurt going around. And again, like I became sort of the public, uh, the public recipient of the anger and the, and the vitriol, which I still don't entirely understand what motivated that level of vitriol, um, and whatever, but the mods dealt with so much. And I talk about that a lot in my little expose video, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did um we did a stream about like the like whole like kink of pride thing with um Evie Lupine and um mm -hmm. uh and Pup Amp and um right uh, Evie was like you know br bringing up a lot of like the stuff that like you were going through and stuff but mm -hmm. um yeah no that was um yeah um quite quite a saga it, it, I mean I don't know it's it's not surprising the more yeah. I learn about uh, Riley but it's also like. I don't know, like, I would yeah, it is, it I is used, disappointing, it's also, quite like, like, Riley's, like, videos, I used to watch her yeah. stuff, and, like, I knew she was kind of, like, more of a social democrat, yeah. but I respected that she was Me too. actually, you know, going to court and arguing for trans rights yeah. and shit, like, at least that's how it appeared to me, so I was pretty surprised by her, like, sudden, like, I would, I would say, like, very reactionary turn that she took. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would argue the, the kink of pride is a tr is a really reactionary term, and it's unfortunate yeah. because. Well, I, I was know. just gonna say, like, it was that, like my take on it was always like this is the oldest like conservative like homophobic talking point I can remember. Like, I'm not yeah. that old; I'm 28, but like, yeah. like from like the earliest shit I can remember was, oh, pride is just an excuse for gay men to like fuck in front of kids. Yep, or and just, like, like this gay is people just, in general. It, Hey, people, yeah, sorry, in don't, general, but don't yeah, like, don't this, have but, a gay teacher, no, correct, don't yeah, yeah, but this is like, whatever. this is just a slightly updated version of it, and it's like, it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's fucking wild and disgusting to just see, like, people who are ostensibly on the same side of this as us, um, taking that side, yeah, and I, I did a video on this called, uh, a, a very arrogantly titled Demon Mama's Ironclad Take on Kink at Pride. Um, I'm very proud of oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. It's all about conf debates about confidence. You yeah, know? You yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I sure would love if anybody could contest my argument that I made in that video because so far a couple of people have tried and it turns out that basically they just think it looks bad and they don't actually have an argument outside of their feelings that it feels bad to them, which I would say... This is something that we... Um... Go for it. Oh, sorry. Like, this is something we talked about with, like, uh, Doe. Um uh like uh the other night but um just how like this is like my kind of issue with and like you know in fair like uh in fairness like you know like you're awesome not all not all debate people but at the same time like this is kind of my issue with some like debate stuff is that like you'll see these people like sort of like arguing for these like very reactionary sort of like things in the name of optics like the stuff mm -hmm. that you were going like through with uh with riley with mm -hmm. like or like and destiny that like you're a bad representative of the trans community like the i i don't know i i don't think this is like a totally pervasive thing but i do see it in a fair bit of like some of the debate stuff i'm exposed to i don't go that deep into it but just the um the oh we need to adopt sort of a strong optics thing mm -hmm. which can very much 
alienate or be like reactionary uh in that it's like that yeah i don't know what what, yeah. what do you think that that's like a a prevailing thing oh, it's within a huge thing debate yeah. stuff? No, it's not just within debate stuff mm-hmm. either um this has been something that if you um you know unfortunately and i don't blame a lot of people for this but a lot of people don't know anything about queer history at all like and there's you know a lot of it's been quite literally suppressed um and a lot of people mm-hmm. are just not a, they just a lot of people died i like, I wasn't aware of it at all. Like my my uh, former roommate was uh, as uh, is a trans woman who um like I was like telling her about like the pink of pride stuff and she was just like yeah no like 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 told me a lot about like the like the relationship that kink has with him yeah. like all that stuff which I was like I was like aware that this was dumb but I did not realize like how dumb it was or how yeah yeah it's been around a while in fact um back even as far f- further back even than Stonewall there was a a fight um. In, within the the sort of gay community um there was an organization called the Madachin or Madison Society um which was they were very much uh their sort of mission was to sort of sanitize the image of gay people so that they could win over you know popular support and oh, um God. they actually like they they came out like against things like uh like uh, Stonewall at the time which we now know as the the, the origination point of pride um, because they felt like that was like a bad look, like a bunch of gays rioting. That's a bad look for us. And uh, yeah, so it's a long. Mm. This is the this is the divide is between sort of the the queer portion of the LGBTQ community and the assimilationist portion. And interestingly, I think that mm. if you follow assimilationist arguments to their like logical conclusions, then it inevitably leads you to things like drop the B, drop the T. These things where it's like, well, let's get rid of the complicated ones, the ones that are hard to explain to people, because we just need to make sure we get X thing. And and it's just a, a never-ending chain of throwing people under the bus in the name of winning over the support of people who, or supposedly winning over the support of people who don't think that you do, who literally think that uh, that um, gay marriage should be overturned. I don't think that's a good a good uh, good use of our energy. But again, I understand where people come from, and I'm more than willing to engage with them um like with regard to like how i feel it but i just i just i don't know i find that it, it's like the shark was jumped in in saying like i'm a really I've got, i'm an irresponsible public figure i'm an i'm a bad trans person for doing this and to me that just sounds like i'm the the icky gross queer that nobody wants to be around or something even though i have you know lots of people who want to be around me so i don't know it's very strange to me um yeah, but yeah, yeah it is it is something that i think is prevalent and i think it's something that's going to be a recurring issue in the coming years because we see we see that there is a you know i mean on one hand it's very sad and it does make me sad because on one hand it's like i see like a lot of young queer people who are very ashamed of who they are and they're made to feel that way by a society that's incredibly toxic to them and it makes sense why you would want to be like no no like i'm i'm not hurting anybody i'm not like that one you know i'm not like that bad person that you're that you're fixating on but it's a trick you see, the conservatives, they know this. They fixate on the, uh, they fixate on like a trans person who does a crime. Well, it's like everybody does crime. All kinds of people do crimes. It's not unique to being trans, but they'll fixate on that and use that as a representative of the whole trans person, of the whole trans community. And then a lot of these people are just, they're, they're, they're hurting. And so they say, you know, well, I'm not like that person. You know, I'm not like that person. But then they have to keep throwing people under the bus because the conservatives hate every, they hate all of us. And so you end up mm. in like a you end up in like a Blair White situation where it's it ends up being your entire thing is constantly saying, Well, I'm not like that one, I'm not like that one, I'm not like that one. Trust me, guys, I'm not like that one. I'm a cool one, I'm the good one. And us good ones, we should be allowed to stay alive. You can get rid of those nasty ones, but we, you know, we're fine. I think it doesn't work. I don't think that approach works. Yeah. And and that's something that Doe and I tragic. Like, yeah, it is tragic. That people feel that way. It makes me mm-hmm. sad, but at the same time, I can only feel so sad uh, for individuals who engage in that um, because, like, when it gets to a level of toxicity, like with RGR, my pity dries up very fast when it starts to get to that level. But in general, I understand it. I mean, fuck. I remember uh, when I first came out as trans and I had, like, just started leaving the cult that I was in, I had a lot of conservative views. I fell into that a lot. I mean, God, I, I could go... I've talked about this extensively on my channel. This, I have on my channel somewhere the... um the story of how I came out, which was really hard. I had a very, very rough time. My family was not approving. It makes sense if you, you know, given the cult background. But, um, and there were times where, like, <laughs> you know, at the time, I kind of, um, you know, I, I, there was a lot of things that I subscribed to that were like that at the time, too. 
Um, so I get it. I get where it comes from, but like, it has to be challenged nonetheless. And I, I, when I was at that point, I needed to be challenged by people doing what I'm doing now, which is saying, no, you don't need to be ashamed. These people, no matter how shameful, no matter how apologetic you are for whatever perceived degeneracy, they will always take it a step further because their end goal is you not existing. That's their end goal. Mm -hmm. That is whether they say it in the form of, well, would you just do that in private where we can't see you? Um, you, you know, we get to wear our wedding rings and we get to hold hands and we get to kiss on the, on the TV screen, but you need to do that in private because everything that you are is degenerate. Those types of people, they're never going to, they're never going to compromise. When you compromise, you're just walking closer to them. You can't compromise on that sort of thing. So, and of course, yeah, the don't only compromise with fascists. Yeah, you don't, you can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also, I wanted to, to, uh, shout this out in the chat here. Um, Lunar Fox, uh, mentioning, talking about trans stuff on Monday. I got the call. My doctor's documentation went through and I was officially medically cleared for top surgery. So, uh, congrats, Lunar Fox. That's holy shit. Sick. That's so pog. Trans thriving and trans liberate liberation, my friend. Hell yeah, um, awesome. Uh, so, uh, dear mama, we've uh, you know this has, this has been a really uh, great chat. Um, yeah, yeah. We do have some videos that we sure. want to show you. Okay, do you mind giving me one second video. to just troubleshoot? This is, this is this is nothing to be oh, excited yeah. about. I'll tell oh, you okay. That. These are, are sure? all awful. This is what we videos. do. We like get people that we like on. We have like a good conversation, and then we're like, "Here's some of the worst things we could find." Yeah. Uh, let's let's all like uh, cringe react to you it. Let it's me fine. ruin your day and make your life as a whole worse. Let, let, uh, me, let me just yeah, this yeah. Real quick. So, so what we're gonna do. Uh, ooh, I mean, we have someone who I don't think that you're aware of. Uh, I I don't know if you would be aware of. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Brian Wong. Are you are you uh do you, are you aware of this? I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm aware of this individual. You, you probably have seen uh, at least a couple of his videos. He had one that was uh, "Wokes are the same as racists." It was like a comedy sketch. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! yeah. Like, I do remember that one. Oh yeah, yes. that was the one. It was like, oh god, that was yeah. so low effort. Yeah. That thing was yes. so embarrassing. So we we're, we we're stand-up comedians and like from the same city that he came out of. So we like know this guy, but he's like, I will say he is a decent comedian but it, it, it's very you can become like a conservative superstar with very little effort oh yes, and right. so of course he he very like quickly just turned into this is like the lowest comp like the lowest common denominator this is just garbage fucking uh conservative propaganda shit he's doing very and, well for uh, himself i have to say he's oh he's tim fun. pool's favorite comedian yeah, he was on Tim Pool. Uh, he's been interviewed on Fox News. You know. Uh, yeah, listen, been... you you press those buttons. You you hit the uh, the conservative brain activation buttons. You say the what are the ones now? It's the um, uh, you know they've always got the uh, the CRT is the one they're obsessed with now. Critical race theory. You say that everybody yeah, perks right. up. You say it enough times, mm. you'll just get a fucking deal with uh, Blaze TV or Uncensored oh, or yeah. whatever one of these other like dark money funded uh ridiculous conservative hype houses and that's what they are they just repeat the same talking points yeah. i react to them all the time this is going to be i'm so in my element so i'm totally ready awesome um, you're oh you're perfect so yeah. the watch together uh, do you all control that or how does it yeah we can all do it you can do it too if you want to pause it you're welcome the, uh, to uh yeah okay the gray bar at the bottom that has the pre you can press play pause or whatever Okay. Feel free to do that. You just can't click on the video to pause it. You have to click on that uh, bar at the bottom. Little bar. Um, okay, let me see. So I oh, you mean the little play bar there? I see. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So I've got this up. I'm gonna see if this doesn't get picked up by my um by my mic audio. Just let me know if you want to press play real quick, oh, and right. then okay. I can test and see if it yeah. does. Anybody? Is there feedback? Is there any uh, feedback? Not being picked up by my mic audio. What's that? I don't hear anything. You don't hear anything. Okay, great. What about uh, chat? Sounds good. Chat, sounds did you great. hear anything? Hell yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So that means I can watch it okay. and react with y'all. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Wait. Well, just a, I want to give a bit more background on this guy because I feel like people don't really know know him that well. Oh, no. Know, at least as well as Sam and I do. Uh, he's become huge. He, like Sam said, he his thing is he's doing conservative chud shit. But he's also like a decent comic and like yeah. there just is no one like that on the left. I knew he had made it when I saw a comment on a Brett Weinstein podcast where Brett Weinstein was talking about how there's no more great comedians and we need someone to rise up and be the new, like, fucking Dave Chappelle, I think he was saying. Uh, the top comment on that video was like, his name is Ryan Long. And oh, boy. 100 upvotes. I was like, oh, shit. 
people are starting to know about this guy. So this this dude Ryan Long, uh, just some information about him. Uh, he is the son of uh, the, or he's I don't know who his dad is, or whatever, but yeah. he's part of the Long family mm-hmm. who owns the Long and McQuaid music stores in Canada. If okay. you're in, in Canada, you know Long and McQuaid. It's like I don't a know. very successful, uh, you know, franchise of uh, like a chain of music stores, like the biggest in Canada. So grew up very. It's, well. it's guitar center or like whatever. Like Any kind of music. I don't play music. I, I've oh, guitar so center. Shit okay, yeah, I know here. guitar center. All right. So the Hell two. Yeah. All right. So the. Uh, uh, and he um has a uh, also achieved success before becoming a comedian as a member of a pop punk band called the Johnstones. The Johnstones. Huh. Uh, th- so they were already. Like, he was already like, you know. He was already rich, and then he was already famous before this whole, this whole thing. This whole thing happened. Uh, and yeah, so that's what he. That's what that's his background. And uh, let's watch the the type of comedy. Okay. That he's if you want, we can watch one of his like ska punk uh, singles yeah. afterwards. Whatever you, yeah, go because for it. I feel like he does not get the uh, like. I like some ska, but all like uh, pop punk ska musicians are war criminals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yep. All right. And they should be treated as such. Absolutely. Well, hopefully so let's, this let's, will let's work. Let's check this out. This this video is called "If American Politics Were a Couple." Okay. Sick. I'm gonna see. All if right. We can... So the. Oh, okay. Good. So that you all did you all hear that for a second? I'm just checking with my chat. Could you hear that for a second? For a second. Yeah. Chat, tell me, please. Yes! Okay, we got this. We got this going. Cool. All right, let's do it. All right, good. Let's dive in. All right, so the two of you are here today to try and reconcile this union. Yeah, I mean, good luck getting her to stop with the name calling. Maybe stop being a selfish asshole. I see my existence just bothers you. She acts like she cares about helping other people when really she just hates me. Oh, oh it looks like we're, we are getting an echo now, damn it. Oh, no. We are definitely getting some stuff from you, yeah. Mm. Um. I wouldn't say I... I... Mm. Uh, we can mute Demon Mama during, or Demon Mama, if you want to put on push to talk. Okay, I can put on, wait, oh, the, um, hold on, I don't think it's because of that. Oh, no, this is so, this is so bad. Of course, you've, you've tripped upon my, oh. my audio nightmares. Um, <laughs> god damn. Oh, god. Way, I mean, wait, we've gone through so I've many. Got, I've got a question. I, I had to, yeah. I is yeah, there yeah, a yeah. way they're, that you could, um, very relatable. Is, is there a way that you could play it through, right. um, through, like, uh, ooh, through Discord, through like Discord? screen share through Discord or something, Would that be possible. Um, man, I can probably do that. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Let me see, because here's the thing: is I have to, um, I have to change. Ooh, what okay, if this I, is, this what is if I hosted my, 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 on like, Discord on my end? Would that work? It probably that could work. work. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, here's the. Uh, let me just do that. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see if we can thing, I yeah, I need to uh change what my thing looks like right now because uh oh boy, this is uh. Oh, this is just a screen, a straight screen capture. That's why this looks like uh, rough okay. for people I watching this right now. I think I should be able to see this, and we should be able to hear it. And then I can also just like, uh, what I can do is I can, I should be able to just. I, I think this should just play through fine. I think. Um, let me just. I'll put push to talk on, and I think this. I think this should work. So let's see. Yeah, yeah. This is this is looking good. Okay, I think cool. this works good. This will be this will be good. Mm-hmm. All yeah, right. yeah. I um, think... And I'll so I'll just watch it on mine. I'm still on the watch together. Uh, okay. If you guys want to, or maybe you know what, mm-hmm. I can just watch this on YouTube. I guess that would be easier. Probably. Um, well, I mean, if we watch it on the watch together, we can all pause it. Oh, true. Um, oh, okay. So then let's just watch it on. The, you guys can mute your tab on watch together, and mm-hmm. then uh, I'll play it on here, and you guys can still pause and play. Yeah. Does that work? I mean, yeah, Demon Mom, you can. Yeah, like, that works I have for me. to mute it. I don't. Demon I don't Mom, need to pause it. I'll just. If you want yeah, to. I'll just. I'll, I'll just. I'll just do this. I know this is scuffed. I'm really sorry about this. I'm still trying to work out some of the. Uh, some of the no, more complex okay. stuff is a little difficult. Yeah. Oh yeah, no worries at all. Um, but uh, yeah. All right. Uh, shall we just give it a try? Are you all ready over there, uh, Demon Mama Sam? Yeah, let's do it. I'm. Re- I'm ready to go. All right, cool. Let's give it a try. All right. So the two of you are here today to try and reconcile this union. Yeah, I mean, good luck getting her to stop with the name calling. Maybe stop. Being- and is that is that working? Yep. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, cool. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All Demon right. Mom is uh, good. Yeah, sweet. All right, we got it figured out, guys. Oh, volume up. Um, uh, I can. I'll put it up on my end. Also, Sam, you can 
uh, put it up on your. I, I'm gonna turn up your yeah. Oh, wait, oh, I see. Stream quiet? volume is up. Yeah, I got it. All right. So the two of you are here today to try and reconcile this union. I mean, good luck getting her to stop with the name calling. Maybe stop. Oh, by the way, guys. Uh, he didn't do like the the uh, Ben Garrison thing this time, where he prints off shirts like in the woke versus racist one, uh, and he labels them. <laughs> Keep in mind, this video is so called cringe. "If American Politics Were a Couple." I'm trying to figure out which part of the couple represents which party. Not being a selfish asshole. I see my existence just bothers you. She acts like she cares about helping other people when really she just hates me. Oh, get over yourself. He refuses to address one single problem we have, so what do you want me to do? Oh, yeah, because everything is a problem for you. All right, let's just calm down. We're going to take it back just a you little. You know that he refuses to pay for our children's health care? Yeah, because we're in a ton of debt right now. Money problems can be a common issue in well, a relationship. Well, we get approved for a loan, but he doesn't want to take it because... Dude, we can't just keep taking loans. Like, her sister already owes us 4000 I mean, just... so, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, do, does anyone want to comment on the, um, you know, uh, obviously America can't have, um, a uh, single payer healthcare because they're in too much debt, yeah. and, you know? Yeah. I don't know about you, uh -huh. but, like, uh, I don't know, do you, do you all have any kids or, or, or anything? No. Okay. I do not. Look, I, I don't have kids either, but I grew up, I'm the, I'm the oldest in my family, and I don't care how much debt I gotta go into. If it comes down to protecting one of my family members, I'm going to spend that money. And that's how most Americans mm -hmm. are. And this argument just really doesn't map well to trying to, like, do, like, it's like, okay, so the dad is just going to let the kids, no. like, appendix explode, I guess? Yeah. Okay. We're, we're I mean, you have to understand right that, Demon Mama, this is, this is coming that. from a rich Canadian. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, true, true. A, yeah. does Who not need to worry about money. B, does not need to worry about health care. Well, yeah. So you know, this, I is, mean, this is who would say that type of thing. True. And yeah, also, like, you know, you've point. got the whole thing of, like, well, you know, when you're a rich Canadian, you know, you start to think that, you know, you can just open up a lemonade stand to pay off your debt, um, which totally, <laughs> totally maps yeah. to um, a, a, an, econ an entire world-sized economy uh, ha taking out debt in the form of federal debt yeah that these are one-to-one -one. i i think you're right yeah L lemonade stand mm -hmm. is the way to go mm -hmm. i do find it like unrealistic that or not unrealistic but i do find it like interesting that he it, he is trying to make the conservative look more reasonable right like I mean, in this yeah. uh, like, in yeah. this exchange yeah he's tr kind of trying uh, to be like oh like, like we're in such debt like oh and then the, the wife is just like yeah, who cares kind of yeah. but then it's like when you actually think about it, it's like the husband is arguing to let the kid die and the mom is like, we'll pay it off. I don't care. We need to like, I don't know. To me, I think that's like, I think that's like a, a pretty bad, that's a pretty bad way to sell yourself. I'm going to let my kid die to save us some money. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and I should mention JJ asking the chat, what instrument did he play in the ska band? Lead vocals. Oh, okay. So he's a singer. <laughs> All right. Sick. Yeah. Got the singer vibes. Should, okay. Should cool. it, yeah. So, all right, let's uh, let's let's keep watching. Sister already owed four thousand dollars, and she just wants to let that go and take loans. We shouldn't have charged my sister to live in the basement to begin with. Who pays for it then? Who? Who? Honestly. Oh my God, you act like I'm the only one who's spending money here. You go over budget all the time with your military supplies. Do you know that he bought a gun that's so big that I don't even feel comfortable having it? She house? got rid of the security in our building. Those guys cause more. The music stops there. There's no more security. I need to have. Like, I need to have a like, gun. That's I so wasn't. I wasn't expecting it to be this much straight. Like, I was it's expecting like, it to be like, yeah. both sides are kind of bad, like, which would already not be great. This is, I was not expecting it to be this level of like, oh, yeah, no, like, everything Democrats do is bad. Everything He's Democrats got do. one type of fan. Yeah. He's got the conservatives. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what happens. You know, you pander a little, they all rush in, and then if you break away, they will not keep watching. Those conservatives will yeah. not keep mm. watching if you don't tow that line. Again, the activation button's yeah. got to be pressed or they'll go away. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Interesting mm -hmm. how that works. So true. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't know about so you, I, but I always, listen, I always know that if my apartment complex doesn't have a security guard at every single stairwell um, interrogating <laughs> my kids every time they go out to go on the bus or whatever, I need a, I need a 50 caliber sniper rifle so that I can blow away those um, people who are going to, you know, come after my kids in my own apartment complex, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. It's also, you know, uh, it's 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 interesting given, you know, his 
very rich family that he didn't mention uh, tax cuts to the wealthy as a version of going over budget. He mentioned yeah, uh, exactly. military. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Military. <laughs> and and why are we lending all the money to your broke sister? We should be lending it to my rich dad or yeah. something like that. Well, mm-hmm. we're, we're, we have a huge direction. house and, and we let your, we let your uh, sister uh, live in the basement for a couple months and charge her $4,000 of rent while she was trying to get back on her feet. Nice. S- selling the conservatives as a super real, super yeah. real good people here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Let it's the a, kid I die. Mean, it's <laughs> yeah. when you personify the parties, even when you're trying to be, like, to show that the conservatives are right, you do have to be, come off like an inhuman fucking monster. Mm. Well, let the kid die. Uh, well, you know, it's also, like, die. it's very... It's very interesting, too, just the, like, the fact that it's, like, there is no, like, obviously there's no, like, um thing of like you know like uh, tax breaks or you know there's not going to be any mention of the fact that they can print their own money uh because like this you know it, it very quickly runs into the like intentionally built in obstacles of talking about the economy as if it's like a family's finances well yeah but i mean like, you, you can't know. start charging your boss more money <laughs> what's yeah, the difference yeah. i mean really what's the difference what's the difference between you know a, a a nation that is engaged in in trillion dollar trade deals that sometimes involve uh ious that are basically just the equivalent of waiting until another government collapses so you never have to pay it back yeah um i'm sorry this is so silly i and this is another thing that conservatives always have to do mm. they can never actually tackle the issue like at its head because they lose on the facts and so what they have to do is they have to distort it mm-hmm. so it sounds similar mm-hmm. But it isn't, and it's it's very frustrating because yep. it's like that's their main yep. tactic. That's the, and that's the com- it, they they yeah. lean on it for comedy so much. It's like this doesn't even map. Good comedy actually accurately makes fun of something, and it's just like totally agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that's the same shit with his first uh, his big like viral hit, right? The wokes versus racist. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like wokes and racists are the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it's just like yeah. super dishonest. Uh, like it was, that one was very interesting because it was very, like what he did was very much like for anyone who hasn't seen it, it would be like he would say actual Nazi talking points and then mm. do like this very distorted straw man of like left wing talking points to like warp them into sounding similar. Mm hmm. Yeah, like um, there'd be like you know like there are like like sketch troops that are all like POC, which is you yeah. know there's. Not a lot of diversity in sketch comedy and improv comedy, comedy, especially improv, because uh, you have to pay for all your courses. And so there's a very certain type of person who winds up becoming improvisers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's cool when there are people who like it's unfortunate they have to do this. But there are people who like will, you know, make a like um, all like POC, like uh, like uh, improv comedy troupe. And they portray that obviously as the same thing as like, from, like you know, uh, Seg- yeah, yeah, segregation. segregation. There's another thing. Yeah. This is really funny. This is this is what you've actually touched on something that I find super funny. So there's been this one thing that like another one of those activation buttons that been that's been going around, which is um, it's I actually looked into this because I like I knew immediately I, the moment I heard it I knew it was bullshit because it always is. But but specifically I knew this one was bullshit. You might have heard some conservative um people talking about like oh there's there's uh. Uh, non non white zones at Pride now. It's really funny because what they were referring to was a private mm. event, a, a private event here in Seattle. Well, I live in Seattle. I actually I actually went to the website and the, and and looked at the venue and everything. I know where this is. I know who, the, vaguely the people who are doing it in this area. There is a there was one single time slot private event that was listed on a like sort of open uh like. Uh, city planning website where they're like hey here are some pride related events and then like you send your event to like some clerk and the clerk rubber stamps it and they put it on the website so that tourists and whatever know what's going on in the area and like one bar did this um did this event that was called uh it was called like blackout i think is what it was called and it was all of the performers were were queer people of color and all queer people of color got in free and if you're white, you had to pay a reparation uh, at the at the at the entrance of the bar. And it's like, well, first of all, this kind of shit happens all the time. I don't know. Do, do people not like realize that like bars will charge people like will not charge women to come in yeah, and then they'll charge you? Yeah. yeah. You know, those kind of things. Ladies yeah. nights and whatever. These things happen all the time. And they were like, oh, yeah, pride has segregation now. And I'm like, no, no, no. Hold on. Let's correct this one event on a <laughs> private venue put on by a. Uh, by a adult 
student organization at the nearby university charge $10 reparation fees for white people to come into a, a black focused event. And that becomes pride is segregated. So they just, they mutate everything mm. into the most unrealistic yeah. and hyper, hyper exaggerated version. And all of this to just drive outrage. And it's like, yeah. I don't know, like, I guess, mm. it, I don't know. I don't know how it's sustainable. I don't know how people get this mad about stuff for this long. Like, especially things that are just invented. I guess it relies entirely on people just never looking into it. But that was debunkable in like mm. 10 seconds. I don't know. But they do that a lot. So. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Conservatives like to uh, pretend that they are, they are all, all of a sudden care about segregation when uh, oh, yeah. it, you know, affects white <laughs> people. Yeah. Well, as we all know, uh, you know? conservatives yeah. famous for, uh, famous for um, you know, supporting the breaking down of, uh, of, uh, of segregation. Mm. They were just like on the front well, lines there. Well, Lincoln, famous Big Republican, Martin. freed the slaves. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh there yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Republican. It, it's always it's always a big smear with them. They can make whatever word they want. They're like, oh, that they're you know, Lincoln was the the was the party of Lincoln. It's like, yeah, but Lincoln wasn't a conservative. Lincoln wrote letters yeah. like with Marx. Yeah. Like Lincoln was like a legitimate like serious mm. seriously critical of the like status. Even as a president, was as far as presidents go, critical of the status quo of America. And like. They, but then they just are like, well, it's, 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 it was Republican Party, so whatever. Again, it's another one of those examples yeah, where they yeah, just distort something. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, it's like, funny because, like... That's Ben Shapiro's <laughs> favorite president, I think, and his, like, tier list, mm. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. It's like, bro, Abraham Lincoln would not like what you're doing, man. Abraham Lincoln would probably... I try to be, like, pretty, like, critical of this type of stuff in terms of, like, you know, like, people, like, saying something that's, like, you know, so easily debunkable. And, like, there are times when the left does it. For one thing, I think the left is pretty good about, like, to some extent fact-checking themselves, and it's nowhere near as much. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, it doesn't really matter for conservatives if what they say is true yeah. or not. They yeah. just, like, fucking, like, like buzzwords, like, he's a Republican. Oh, and let's not look into the what happened to the two parties during, like, the civil rights era. Oh, yeah, inconvenient uh, stuff can be dis dis disregarded. Platforms. They can just sort of disregard yeah. any any no, inconvenient no. thing. At, fr at And, and I, yeah. I've talked about this before, like, why this is such a big, a big problem, specifically with conservatives but like i think it boils down to a matter of ideology right if your core ideology sort of the core of conservative ideology is that like um there is a god given hierarchy in the world and that hierarchy um was already yep. in place and it needs to be preserved and every day we stray further from god's light and that me that is going to piss off god that is going to get get america you know lightning bolted or whatever um and they 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 believe that those are the stakes. They believe that basically the world has degenerated from what it once was and needs to be returned to that. And as it turns out, if you believe that God is literally approving of you doing whatever it is to get the world back on God's track, you're going to be willing to lie. You're going to be willing to distort. You're going to be willing to rewrite history to to fit your goal. I mean, what can what 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 goal can compare with God? God telling you that you are the rightful mm. heir of the world, and that is a very common belief. It's not just among um, like the evangelicals either, like the hardcore evangelicals. Although that is one hundred percent. Like I mean, the church I grew up in um, were like hardcore Republicans, but they didn't even believe in democracy. They literally, they weren't my church that I grew up in, which was very extreme, very Republican once again, um, extremely politically active. Um, they they didn't believe that like the just way of running a, a a government was democracy. They believed that they needed to basically reestablish a uh, Christian theocracy. That was their goal. And if they needed to use a democracy or short circuit democracy in order to make that happen, they were more than willing to do that. Uh, real quick, do you mind if I just welcome in a raid real quick? Hell yeah. Welcome very much oh, yeah, to all do. of the incredibly, um, incredibly awesome um, viewers from Dylan Burns oh, TV, 173 viewers. Come on in and get comfy. We are chilling out and reacting to some conservative cringe comedy with the goat and the goblin who are super pog and you should give them a follow in addition to following me on Twitch. If you're new to me, I'm a political edutainer by the name of Dima Mama. Once again, I'm appearing on the Goat and the Goblins podcast. We're talking about all kinds of cool stuff. We'd love to have you come hang out on my website, demamama.com, where you can watch this whole thing. And uh, we're so happy to welcome you all. Dylan, as always, much love and thank you. So there we go. Hell Just wanted yeah. to make sure I, I uh, got it. Hell yeah. Burns, people. What up, everybody?
Um, um, yeah, well, yeah, uh, well uh, do, do you mind if we do like a quick like shouting out ourselves please. real quick just to do the gross thing? Yeah, please, yeah. Please. Uh, what's up, everyone? We're um, the Goat and the Goblin. Um, my name is Sam. I run a YouTube channel called We're in Hell. Um, I'm here with uh, my friend James, who runs a YouTube channel called Show Goblin. Together, we're the Goat and the Goblin. We, um, basically, yeah, it's basically a, a podcast uh, where we just get like uh, cool creators that we like to hang out and watch cringe shit. And, uh, yeah, it's a fun time. Come come check us out anytime. Hey, come fly with us. I'm James. I'm the Chill mm. Goblin. Check me out on YouTube. Uh all right. Um so yeah, let's let's get back into this video. Uh this is if American politics were a couple. And it's basically just, you know, turning point USA tier uh talking points, put it but in a sketch form. So let's uh let's keep watching. This is okay, no, no, can, wait, can I give you my description of what this yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is uh, the classic um Country's economics being treated as if it's a dining room table, like a family's economics, plus women be shopping. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. Really. I mean, we do we do be shopping though. We do be shopping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm That's always shopping. True. Shopping right now. It's it's I'm biology. Mm -hmm. It's in my biology. The shopper's gene. It's uh it's so bad. Every time I see an accessory that I just can't resist, I have to buy it. And if I don't, well, then I freak out and scream at my husband oh. that I definitely have, and I'm because yeah. I'm not gay, right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, this, yeah. Is a, this is a preview of Riley Grace Rashong's next video. Uh, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Woo <-hoo! laughs> Woo Bada boom! Oh, my, they're not shopping. They're not. Well, it was on the Tom McDonald uh, thing. Riley oh. Grace Rashong needs to like collab with right. like a conservative. It could be right and wrong. Oh my God! <laughs> damn. Yeah, maybe the next. Maybe the next music video. Oh God! Oh, I saw that Tom oh, McDonald. Right, right. Let's watch it. Let's watch let's, it. Let's, uh, let's watch. Let's get back into it. You go over budget all the time with your military supplies. Do you know that he bought a gun that's so big that I don't even feel comfortable having it? She house. got rid of the security in our building. Those guys cause more problems than they solve. How? How that. is that even possible? Yes. Okay, just look. Would you consider allowing the security back? How is this even possible? possible? So uh, also, How is yeah. this, even this is acting as if for the security to cause more problems than they solve. Yeah, this is acting as though the Democrats successfully did defund the police. Oh, actually, no, abolish the police mm -hmm. and like trying mm -hmm. to be like, well, That's the police are gone. Ridiculous that they did that. I I have never they I haven't did, seen very didn't do that. Yeah, I mean, ever since Seattle burned to the ground, Can... I haven't seen a single cop ever. Yeah, anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. haven't seen a no, I haven't also, seen the city, but Democratic Party is not even in favor of defund the police. Like literally, like maybe. Cory Bush. Uh, other than that, no one is on board with that. He's acting like the Democrats already did abolish them. That oh yeah, totally. Well, I mean, you know that, don't you? Ridiculous. Don't you know about Joe Biden's uh, Biden's very very popular Communism, election promise? Right. Yeah, the, well, but the first the first tenet of of Bidenism is that every morning yeah. they have a penis <laughs> a penis shape uh, a uh, penis shaming contest where they bring up a randomly selected group of policemen. And then they put them on the news and they make fun of the size of their penis while they have a pig hat on. And that might sound like yeah. a kink thing to you, but it's actually part of a radical uh, agenda by Joe Biden to shame the police into no longer existing anymore. Uh, it, you know, it, I was you know personally what, a fan of it. We've all, we all, we're all well versed in Marxist Bidenism. We, oh, all good, know, good. we all know the basic tenets. Yeah, no, I would be sad if. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's he's very much uh, Bi Biden. He was he made a compromise with the cops. He mm -hmm. let them keep their jobs. They keep their pay, but all they do now is compare dick sizes on live TV. Live TV That's yeah. all they do. Yep. They're not allowed to do cop stuff anymore. Yep. Just compare dick sizes. Yeah, so, and they all have yeah. to compare to. Uh, they all have to compare it to Hunter Biden. And uh, you know, listen, Which we've all not seen. An easy task, yeah, it's not you. an easy task. We've seen that. We've seen the photos. We've seen the photos, folks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Snopes.com, they confirmed him. Yeah, that's that's uh that's what he's working with. All right. Let's I, also, let's... I wanted to like I, I rewound this for a second because I think that what we're gonna hear is his idea of what a reasonable compromise would look like between the Democrats and the Republicans, Ooh. and I I can't wait. I'm so okay. excited. Let's do it. She got rid of the security in our building. Those guys cause more problems than they solve. How? How is that even possible? Yes. Okay, just look. Would you consider allowing the security back in if he agrees to a smaller gun? Not happening. Hell no. I can have whatever gun that I want. Welcome to my life. So what? The whole neighborhood is less safe because of you. Oh, well, you care about 
anyone else's safety. I care about the safety of our kids. I guess not their health because there was a flu going around. He sent them right to school. Yeah, see, this is exactly what she's like. She doesn't care about criminals, but then there's a flu going around. It's no ins and outs in our house. Oh my. Okay, th th let's uh, pause it there. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot, to, a lot yeah. to unpack there. Yeah. So first yeah. of all, I guess the 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 the, the compromise is, um, which is you know surprising, I guess from him is uh, cuts to the U.S. military in exchange for in, put that all into the police. Well, yeah. uh, I mean, I thought he said that if you let the security <laughs> back, you can get a slightly smaller gun. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess that is what it kind of translates to. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what he's talking about because I can't tell if he's trying to like. Yeah riff on like literal gun ownership like i don't know this is so weird the thing that the thing that weirds me out too is that like um th there's like this weird equivalence that was just played between like crime deaths um against children and um <clears throat> and like a flu like first of all li i know they're making oh, a reference yeah, yeah. to cor to coronavirus obviously but like the mm -hmm. flu alone already kills more people than violent crime does in america like by a long shot crime like is way down yeah like crime is down low. but i mean also like what what kids are involved in like shootings like i mean obviously unfortunately that well listen i shouldn't have said that because well, we okay. do live in the yeah, age of, of school shootings <laughs> but i mean besides from mind, that yes. outside of those those lightning strike events like do, do you think it's like i don't know kids running like cocaine and like they're they've stolen their dad's like expedition and they're just like they they stole their dad's expedition and then they sold stole their dad's like fifty caliber um gun and then they just run around on the street like selling crack to other kids like what like no like what the fuck what is what is this like this weird think of the children thing but it's like children aren't even the victims of that type of violent crime that they are the, e even the small amount of, a comparatively mm. small amount of violent crime is not even targeted at children it it isn't it's not fucking targeted at children so what are you even talking about again another example of just like what is even being talked about on the conservative side of things and like mm. obviously like this is pretty clearly trying to make like the woman seem like oh oh she's scared of of a sniffles haha <laughs> and whatever but it's like yeah actually yeah, flu, it is more sure. rational to be more scared of a disease which kills way more people every single year than violent crime and it also kills more kids every year than violent crime. It's a much more rational fear. I think he's just, again, once again, just making the yeah. conservatives look dumb. It's all, I mean, it's all like conservative talking points, right? Like nobody's yeah. going to be a fan of Ryan Long at this point unless they don't believe that COVID is, like they think it's just the flu. Like they think that whatever. There's also like, I'm noticing sort of a conflation, which he, he's also done before of liberals and the left mm -hmm. you know talking yeah. about people who are in favor of this is the classic the move of like yeah so he's but he's acting like the oh, same you love are you like, love nancy pelosi and you know antifa and it's like no yeah. those are di very different yeah. groups of people <laughs> yeah yeah no oh. one in antifa likes biden you know uh, but he's act in this case mm. he's acting like anyone who is in favor of abolishing the police is also like pro you know taking away people's guns they're doing the like little that. nancy like, pelosi clap they're like ah. oh yeah yeah they're mm. doing that that's 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 my favorite thing whenever whenever there's a a big anti-fascist rally or whatever in my town i just see them all wearing their nancy pelosi yeah. masks i mean isn't this the same kind of thing that alex jones does when he calls joe biden like a chinese communist like where it's mm. just like you yeah. couldn't be more mm. wrong. You're you're associating the most milk toast conservative liberal that you can imagine with people who like literally hate being called liberals. It, they don't even consider yeah. themselves like the same mm. faction. There's like some surface, you know, agreement on certain things. Like, uh, you know, uh, you know, most Democrats don't think that you know gays need to be electrocuted. Um, but uh, you know, oh, unlike yeah. most re Republicans, but. Um, that's about all that they agree on beyond that. And it's just like, I don't know, this inability. But I think that, that I think they do that intentionally, right? Like, it's a way of, of, of oh, bullying the, yeah. the liberals. I don't know. It's a way of creating this, like, straw man. Yeah, it's, it's a, a straw man. I would man. say a pretty effective way of creating a straw man. It's just, here's these, like, two things which yeah. obviously are in conflict. And, yeah. Yeah, and then also, I mean, there is a certain part of, like, what we were talking about too before with this like goading people into a compromise like i think that people like joe biden are like well i'm not a i'm not a chinese communist i'll show you i'll make a compromise i'll reach across the yeah. aisle and then you step towards them and it doesn't matter because anyone left of them is a chinese communist it's all the same they just they just want to bully the weakest link into, mm -hmm. into walking towards them 
and you can't you yeah. can't walk towards them because their worldview is one that is fundamentally built on the idea that there are people who should be oppressed and people who should be doing the oppressing and that god is okay with that and i find that to be like uh i don't know like i, I don't know it's so common and it's funny that we've like touched on it on two totally different topics both with like the queer stuff and with this it's the same tactic yeah yeah it's like that that's uh what was that like a poem or a tweet that was like uh meet me in the middle says the unjust man you take a step toward him he takes a step back meet yeah. me in the middle says the unjust man like you're just fucking mm. like giving an allowance like giving like you know more room for the right to the far right to move the overton window that much further 100 percent like compromise with that yeah and, and then people will of course like, take that and they'll rights. go oh well you see like lefties will never compromise they're just completely irrational it's like no it's just that what you're asking for people to compromise on is literally people's exist like right to exist and right yep. to be treated as a human no we should not compromise on that we should not be mm. compromising on these mm -hmm. basic things and the, it's just that they've they frame they set the window at such a point and i mean i don't know some of this is a prop is a product of just the propaganda it's, oh, it's such a dire state of affairs. Well, sure, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's the whole you know ideology is like water. Like the fish doesn't know it's like swimming. It like mm. can't see the water. Where it's like it's so like we're we're in such a like the right wing has such a control over the Overton window where it's like it's not even seen as ideology to be like oh obviously you need to compromise on you know um something like letting people die to you know covid or yeah. for, to save right. the economy like that's not even seen as like a ra the radical well, position that it is there's a healthy debate around this uh, you know the environment mm. uh, yeah among oh scientists that there's like a, oh yeah why don't we meet in the middle why don't we only do all, all the fracking that we're already doing yeah exactly uh, or it's or like, like even like something like uh you know like getting rid of like um like uh ICE or like Department of Homeland Security that that didn't exist until after 9-11 but it's like it's so naturalized in, like that it's like a yeah. radical idea to go back to like yeah yeah and 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 For, then, yeah, yeah so anyway I don't want to I don't want us to keep not, not watch a video but I was just gonna say like it's funny too <laughs> oh, because it regularly takes us like an oh, hour to get through what, what, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's fine that's fine yeah it, this it, is it, normal. It, it's funny too because like a lot of times it'll be something like this where it'll be like hey guys the 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 earth is literally going to catch on fire in in uh in five years and they're like well how about we how about we settle um and we'll let the earth set on fire in 10 years and you're just like is that is that really like how about we wear our masks <laughs> for 50% of the time yeah. that we're standing inside and then we take it off and then everybody just gets immediately affected. It's these compromises oh, that man. ultimately <laughs> just lead to worse yeah. conditions for everyone. There's no point to do it. And they don't do it anyway. Like, especially with the, uh, I could go on the mask, mask thing, but anyway. Yeah. The, like oh, I, I mean, I can go in on the mask thing too, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the I don't know if you've seen it, Demon Mama. I made, I made a video about this very recently where, it, I mean, it's wild. This is, I mean, the stuff that we see currently is almost exactly what happened in, like, um, San Francisco in, like, what, during the Spanish flu. Like, Holy shit. Like, the rhetoric is, like, there. I, I, I quote this in a video I made about it, but it's, um, there, there is a, a like the Christian scientists in um, San Francisco uh -huh. posted an open letter because they obviously did not like masks. And um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure if, as someone who knows about cults, probably know a bit, a bit about the Christian scientists. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't, they generally don't really believe in medicine. Instead, yep. they believe in the healing power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so they posted a letter about um, uh, being anti-mask. That is, it literally could have been written today. Oh wow! Well, I gotta, I gotta put that video on my watch list. I haven't seen that particular video yet, but that sounds amazing. Maybe we could watch it with chat afterwards. Uh, oh yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, there was a whole bunch. Yeah, of I'll send it over if you want. Yeah. Hell yeah! I don't know if you touched on like the thing with like um, they had issues with like the vaccinations at the time too, where like uh, it was there was like this huge problem where there was no like nat like proper national like uh vaccination program or attempt or treatment program, and so like local doctors would like do their best to treat their patients and some of them some of their like medicines would inevitably fail and then that would make that would just be immediately jumped upon by the propagandists at the time to be like look this this medicine didn't work you can't trust any of it and it's like oh god it's the same as today Ooh. nothing's changed i mean um i i did not touch on that because i 
to be fr fully honest about my video, did not do enough research into oh. how the vaccine worked with the Spanish flu. And so I got some stuff wrong in that part. Like, mm. if, you, if you ever want, I'd be happy to, like, watch that with you if you want to, like, make some commentary on it. I mean, like I'm not, a, like, a super expert. For some but, parts of that. But, yeah, I'm not, like, I don't claim to be an expert. But it was I was talking to a doctor on my stream a couple months back about this spe specific thing. And, and he talked about, a, he, he went into depth about how, like, there was this huge problem with vaccines and treatments. Um, because of course they didn't have any sort of vaccine like what we have today. Um, and there was just like mm. there were doctors that would like try that would like brew brew treatments at home, and it was just like completely completely wild because there were so many people dying from it. Anyway, yeah. Damn. We can continue if you want to. I, I mean, like it, it does it does bug me when uh people act like the you know the science isn't in on masks or that like even just politicizing masks at all is fucking ridiculous like acting like there's like it, what the fuck does it do to you to wear a mask like it's a little bit annoying well, it's my freedom it's not going to that's my like, freedom choke you to death it's not the way I mean, to, to yeah. communism it's you know like that that might be nice but it's not going to to lead there it's just a fucking like health measure that you, you should take if you're exactly. an informed person it has nothing to do I mean, with politics yeah it's like, unless you make it to do with politics because you're a fucking we've talked about this like uh james and i uh dm mama live in the only place in north america where you still can't go uh eat indoors oh uh so like uh ontario is pretty fucked yeah. but um like I, I i cannot wait to not have to wear masks anymore but it is like like to me someone who's like anti-mask you might as well be someone who like believes that you shouldn't have to like yield to ambulances yeah, like you yeah. are just someone who does not think that you should ever have to suffer any inconvenience for the good of society well i mean it's Absolutely. funny because they but, have but like... in this video he's making the comparison that like oh you think you're so cool not letting people with a mask play with our kids i guess you do care about crime all of a sudden that's just like, you know, having prisons or like having like, well, you know, not letting everyone into your house. Yeah. Or whatever. It's I a mean, yeah. completely dishonest comparison. It's it, treated as if it's a complete gotcha. Yeah. On the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's actually not political to wear a mask. It's, you know, political to want to abolish prisons. Yeah. Sure. But like, you know, you're just. Mm -hmm. Denying fucking. Like, you know, they turn it health, into a political issue by yeah, yeah. by tying it to like conspiracies about how they're like. Um, this is something I've encountered with my own family members. In fact, um, they turn it into a political issue by by uh like tying it very weirdly to like the idea of being like domesticated. Like literally, I've seen this come up a ton of times on my yes um, yes yeah um mm -hmm. on 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 my like Facebook that I have that like I'm still connected with some of my conservative family members and like. They'll bring this up. It's like, oh, yeah, they're trying to turn, like, Americans into sheep. They're trying to make you cucked. It's like it plays on that so much. They turn it into a political issue by being like, yeah, mm. if you wear the mask, you're just going along. And what's next? A barcode? What's next? The mark of the beast? It's that sort of thing. Yeah. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. It sounds very sexual. It is. It There's always that, isn't like, there? With a lot of that. You're going to be yeah. a of cuck. Yeah, you're gonna be like, oh, uh, based. You're gonna look up to daddy, uh, government, <laughs> health scientist. Oh, it's just like, why do yeah. you have to phrase things like that all the time? Mm -hmm. what, what, where do you spend your time online? You anyway, wonder, you wonder what's, what's your, going through their minds. What's their motivation? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they're gonna mm. put a ch 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 choke collar on you next. Yeah. That'll be the next thing Fauci says. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. Fauci's gonna get yeah, out. Then, then he's gonna, gonna get out the switch. <laughs> That's your horny voice. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna tie you up. Yeah, this is what uh, my. Yeah. <laughs> this is how I talk to my girlfriend. Like, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, I love it. Uh, they're gonna tie you up and fuck your wife. Yeah, that's what they'll do. I mean, <laughs> listen, they love that. They love calling each other cucks for a reason. I mean, I like to call conservatives cucks all the time mm. too. But uh, to be fair, yeah. oh yeah, it's really, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's very praxis. It's a very funny, fun word. Oh, yeah. Got very sharp beginning and end. Uh, it's, it's it's good. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. See what she's like. She doesn't care about criminals, but there's a flu going around. It's no ins and outs in our house. Oh my god! If you care about our kids so much, why are you giving them the same allowance that you got when you were a kid fifty thousand million years ago? I worked when I was a kid and soaking that. It's a different world now. Things are more expensive. <laughs> you know what her different world means? Spending my money. Well, not everyone could get hired at their dad's company. I, mean, I got that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Ooh, they finally <laughs> got, got a right jab on. in. <laughs> yeah. 
job fair and square. And I work 12 hours a day, by the way, so she can take our kids to a drag show. Oh, this again, it was one time he sewed your This is probably going to be more gross it, very shortly. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's also, knows. I mean, it's worth noting that uh, Ryan Wong definitely, uh, you know, could, uh, I, I don't think that he had to work 12 hours a day at his dad's company. Well, listen, yes, listen, yeah, what's yeah. a little, what's a little bit of a big today? thing? Like six-year-old Ryan Wong. What's a few inches between you and your YouTube, uh, your, you and your YouTube subs, you know, uh, yeah. worked 12 days in your life mm -hmm. over the summer for your daddy yeah. uh, equals work, work 12 hours. And eh, it's not that much of a difference. Also, I yeah. love that. Like there's this, there's this yeah. like thing, and this is actually something I think conservatives kind of fail on a little bit, which is that they fixate on drag a lot. And like drag is really popular right now. Like RuPaul's drag race is an incredibly popular show. Like people don't have the same, um like visceral reaction to drag that they used to and so this is dropped like oh you took our kid to a drag show and like i think besides like the most rabid conservatives like most people go like wait what like is it a bad thing like mm. you're not you're not i watch rupaul's drag race on tv with my kids every night while we eat dinner like what like we watch it on netflix it's like you know, like this is the thing that like this and this, we, people we, do that. <laughs> yeah, we we encountered this. Um, we encountered this in the um in the the John Doyle like man on the street thing. He's like he was showing pictures of drag and like some people were kind of like yeah I don't know how I feel about that. But that was the that was the worst reaction he got besides like the literal person who thought that they were um that the government was basically um using weather control to blow up Florida. Besides that person, okay. um uh like everyone was just kind of like I don't know like. I don't know, it's not my thing, but, like, whatever. Like, I think that conservatives overestimate how, um, how, like, weird they mm. are about, about drag. And, like, people just aren't that weird about drag anymore. Like, drag is just a fucking beauty pageant. There's nothing even, like, there, yeah. of course, there have been drag performers who've done really risque outfits. But, like, that's not even, that's not even, like, a core part of drag these days. I don't know. It's very mm. silly to me. True. Well, they're like, if, if it's not a child beauty pageant, I don't want any part of it. Yeah, they love I mean, those. I, I know I know a few uh, years ago there was like, I, don't, I mean, probably still now, there was a lot of confusion among a lot of, not just conservative people, but like, uh, I guess people in general about the difference between transgender person and like a drag queen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do you feel like there's less ignorance about that now? Like people kind of know that there's a difference now yeah i think that that's more of a thing like I, I mean part of that is because of um shows like uh like rupaul which like i don't think rupaul like i don't like think rupaul's like some amazing person but i do think that shows like that that like show that like oh, okay like drag queens this is like a performance this is like this is an act this is a pageant um you know most most drag queens are, are men who like dressing up and enjoy this and that's fine and then of course you know um trans people are you know are a little bit more you know we've become in the target of the public eye but there is a distinction that people understand and it is it has percolated down especially among adults like adults are like oh yeah okay i can see how there's a difference between these things but like even when they try to conflate it they don't do a good job with it because it's like okay again a lot of people like drag these days like it's popular and so like okay so you're equating you're trying to equate a trans trans woman to a drag queen and then people are like oh, okay but i am okay with drag so why should i i don't know i think it's a miscalculation mm. on their part which i'm more than happy for them to keep making that miscalculation um yeah no it drags more and more popular yeah it is uh, yeah. yeah that's that's true mm. yeah but yeah there, there does still seem to be a, a lot of panic especially around like drag queens doing like the story time thing mm -hmm. uh on the conservative side and i mean like you know Mm -hmm. um that's sort of its own little like kink at pride discourse in a way uh but yeah no i i yeah. tend to agree there is sort of a miscalculation seeing as how prominent drag is in like you know mainstream people's lives yeah. uh so yeah i mean but, this kind of reminds me of like one of the most like powerful things i think with like sorry just before we go back like just the one of the most powerful things about comedy which um the guy ryan wong is in like the the guy in this scene on uh, other than ryan the like therapist is yeah. a guy we know danny who is a very fucked up person who fucking sucks but um oh, okay. something that like he has tapped into very effectively uh, in the past he's done comedy shows intending for them to be shut down Okay. Um, 
where like you know it'll be like a free speech comedy show and it's like he purposely did it to get like protesters to come to shut it down. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. And yeah. like, like Milo Yiannopoulos, like, so, like gave him like a big shout out. He was like on like a bunch of like conservative Steven things, Crowder, and like he's he very aware of the fact that like, yeah. And like, this is a thing that I think is a very powerful thing about comedy, which is I think something that are misunderstanding about Pride, which is that you never look like the good person saying that's not funny. Don't laugh at that. Yeah. And like in the same like in the same way like uh, drag isn't like you know exactly the same thing but it mm-hmm. is like it's just it's fun and like it, like you don't look drag like the is cool person being like yeah. that's inappropriate that is should not be allowed you yeah know? the pearl clutching the drag pearl is clutching is, is like, like there is yeah. yeah yeah there's aspects of comedy for sure um absolutely mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. and and I don't know it's so it it always it always I don't know I guess I wonder sometimes how like. Uh, I, I was watching. I was watching y'all uh, streaming with Doe the other day, and uh, you watch mm. that 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 rap is crap thing, and I'm just like, how does how do they do it? Like, how does he he it, Ben Shapiro is such a dweeb, and it's like, and and it's it he's just like boring. Like, what what is this? And this is something I run into with a lot of conservative videos. Is I wonder like, are they gonna have like a a big issue in the future? Like with with like crossing like like age demographics because it seems like a lot of this like drag is is icky and gross is very much targeted at like boomers and it's like well boomers Mm. can't sustain this forever right like they have they need the young blood but if they're not if they're doing stuff like this where it's just like it doesn't it doesn't make sense to, to like younger people like millennials let alone zoomers like what are they doing like who are they aiming at i'm just like i don't know it surprises me and uh and it's so dweeby. So unlikable. Yeah, it's super it's the pearl clutching. Like I mean Tim Poole was doing it about the mm-hmm. monkey, the monkey guy, the monkey guy with the penis, you know, like that whole thing, the fake penis. Oh, yeah. That whole thing was like um I, like first of all I looked at the story and uh, once again it's another example of them just completely fabricating every detail about the story incorrectly. But also it's like wait, this is like the equivalent of getting mad over like some high school kids go and steal a, a blow up doll from their local Spencer's gifts, and then they they blow it up and then they throw it off the balcony um, at a school dance. And there's like, and then all the teachers are like, "Oh no!" You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it's just <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that's that's Spencer what they come Kiro across as. Like, mm, this is the flannel of Western civilization. Oh these, no! These children took a blow up doll. Oh my yeah. god! Fainting, literally just doing this fainting routine, and that's literally what. Tim oh, oh my god! Sorry, I- Really have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Oh yeah, should we do a, a quick bio break? I I could go too. Yeah, sure. I'll uh, I'll take I'll take a, a, t- a quick break then. Yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll make okay, cool. I'll make use um, of it. Yeah, I'll go get a drink. Thank you. Sounds good. Let me throw in a quick one minute ad break, and uh, we'll be right back. Verb, everybody. I can't do the song right now because of the thing. Be right back.
Yo. Sorry about that. <laughs> Roger can get one of the bands up in here ASAP. Oh, did uh, Demon Mom left too? For, uh, for yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, she just went to go. Uh, yeah, she just went to Yo. Go. Hey, what's Yo, up? what up? Yo, I'm back. Hell yeah. Awesome. All right. We're all back. Refresh. Let's do this. New drink. Let's uh, let's 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 go on. It sounds like there's some transphobic stuff about to happen. So oh, let's uh, do it. Oh, hit me with it. Let's let's power through. Greg Show. Oh, this again. It was one time. He's so dramatic. It was a festival. She brought Billy home with makeup on. Who cares if he wants to wear makeup? No, he doesn't want to wear makeup. You wanted him to wear makeup. Oh. She just does this to piss me off. And for the record, she... so that's like a age old. This is a common. This is a common trope on yeah. their uh, stream. Yeah. On their their show their video. <laughs> That's true. He he did do a one about uh, the the forced uh, mm -hmm. transification of children. Yeah, for uh, you know, sissification. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We love that. Um, I mean, I can't help but feel like these people um read in a lot of their own kinks and stuff into it. Like you know, they want to be trapped in a cage yeah. and injected by mommy with estro estrogen. But um, you know, it's it always weirds me out that this is like still a go to. It's like. It, it, it this is one of those ones where it's it's so far fetched and disconnected from reality that I just wonder how any I, I again I wonder how anybody takes it seriously because it's like um nobody nobody is is it is so hard for trans people to get the healthcare that they need to get makeup to get anything to not get beaten up like out in public it's like wh who do you think is encouraging this like where do you where does this idea come from? Parents are, are in America are notoriously bad for they're literally world infamous for kicking out their gay children. Where do you get this idea that like parents are just like, yeah, I want my I want my child to be a trans. I want my child to be a gay here. Let me just um, buy some Amazon makeup and that will make them into a, like it is such a strange narrative. But again, I don't think they ever engaged any deeper than just the surface. Like, yeah, this has got to be about the parents. Kids can't be mm. interested in makeup even though tons and tons of kids it, are it reminds me of like the whole like i don't know if like of like canadian like i think we probably have different psas growing up there are a lot yeah. of like canadian things of like you know like oh like you'll like smoke a joint and they'll sneak pcp into it and yeah stuff. and it's like no one's giving away pcp to high schoolers like that's, that's, that's just expensive you have to go looking for it yeah you your kids went out on halloween and instead of getting a caramel candy they got a caramel edible. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, who the fuck yeah, is handing yeah, out yeah, edibles? Yeah, yeah. Jesus no, Christ. What? what? Why would you, anyone do that? It's so much easier to slip razor blades in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on now. Nobody's going to do that. <laughs> Which that in and of itself um, is like a product of American paranoia. Like the idea that mm -hmm. like random, random neighbors are going to poison your kid's candy or put a razor blade in their apple. It's like, where did this idea come from? Like, I'm, I actually know where it came from. It's um, it's really interesting with the with the razor blade and apple thing. It literally was a news story that it was like, what if this could happen? And then yeah. everyone was like, you're right, it does happen. Yeah, um, I'm just like, what motivation? <laughs> like, who? Uh, like, you can imagine can maybe some like when one in like candy bars that came from um some kid's uncle accidentally like hit his heroin and it wound up in his kid's Halloween candy and it like tragically killed the kid. But then they Acted like it was like malicious intent to like regularly just do that to kids, where it was like, also, no, this one guy horribly fucked up. Yeah, I gotta say, just from a logistics perspective, if you're uh, like a, a psycho and you're trying to kill as many kids as possible, mm -hmm. and you're doing it with apples with uh, razor blades in them, I guarantee you, kids are gonna remember the house that gave him an apple on Halloween. Oh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> They're gonna think, <laughs> what kid is gonna even bite into it? You. Like, have you ever you're been? I don't know, like yeah. that you, you kids kids will viciously mock the house that gives them granola bars, let alone apples. Yeah, if you hand it out, they're not even to eat it. Yeah, they, well, they'll if just throw it. They'll throw it in your apple, house through you your window. Apples, you're gonna you're gonna find yeah, exactly. in, like, after the the snow is all melted, you're gonna find your the ditch right in front of your house is full of rotten apples and razor blades. Yep, because exactly. that's where they all got thrown. Yeah, it's funny too. <laughs> like I think this touches on something that's really that might even be like more more prevalent here in the states than it is even in canada but there's like it's like social paranoia has be, has has been like a serious thing here in america for a long time like this idea that any of your neighbors mm -hmm. could just instantly kill you like it has completely destroyed 
uh, any sense of community in like most of America. Like, I mean, hell, wow, it's stark. Like, I remember, uh, I remember, like, I don't know, th- this is something unique I have being 30, which is, like, not old, but, like, old enough to remember, like, the, uh, the like, pre-adoption of the, in- of the internet, you know? My neighborhood was, like, we would literally just, l- in the morning, we would get up, like, especially in the summer, we would get up in the morning, and I would just be like, okay, I'm going outside, mom. And then my mom's like, okay, just listen in case we call you or whatever. And then we would go outside, we'd run around to our na- our friends' houses, knock on the door, go, hey, can the ex- can X person come out to play? And we would play, we'd run around. Occasionally, you'd hear someone mo- someone's mom being like, we gotta go to the doctor appointment, come home, and whatever. That is just non-existent. Like, anywhere i don't see any neighborhoods like that anymore you still see kids going out and 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 playing but it's always like it's like a it is a an event like they're going to the park or they're going to do this thing as opposed to just something that was a daily occurrence play day and it's like i don't know maybe it was like maybe it was like really ramped up because of 9 11 like i hate the like the like oh 9 11 still trying to get over 9 11 you know the like office joke but oh my god it's like wild like americans are so paranoid and like, oh, there's a really great video. Are you familiar with Echo Gecko by any chance? The um, no, channel on YouTube. Familiar. Oh my god, super super good channel. Um, Echo Gecko does like video essays, usually about like urban planning and and like uh social trends. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, Echo Gecko's awesome. Echo about, Gecko. Like, how the burbs. Kill yeah, yeah. Uh, how the America burbs exactly? How the burbs are killing the planet and all that. And they recently did one about broken windows policing. Echo Gecko's awesome, and they have a video. Um, oh, if you cool. look in there, they that. have one that's called uh, D- Murder Death Trucks or something like that. Vroom Doom. That's the one. Vroom Doom. And um, it's uh, it's right over there on the right side of the screen there. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Vroom Doom is like a super, super good video where they talk about like basically they're comparing multiple theories for why um, American SUVs have 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 progressed in the way that they have because like american suvs are bigger than ever before but they actually have like less horsepower they actually have less performance features and they don't even have as much internal space as smaller suvs there is like identical internal space um to some of these suvs they're just bigger frames and and so he goes in and he analyzes multiple theories as to why this happened and his conclusion is like the the, the most salient one, the most well-researched and well-documented one is basically just that Americans buy cars that make them feel like they're, uh, like they're, it, uh, it's like an urban tank. Like they can feel like they can drive mm-hmm. through their neighborhood without having to be afraid of getting bumped into by their neighbor or whatever. And it is this very weird, uh, like neighbor turning on neighbor paranoia. And I don't know, this whole thing kind of reminds me of that. This all that we've been talking about here kind of I mean, reminds me of that. Yeah. I like I like uh I I'm uh, I'm not that much younger. Like I'm I'm 28, but uh, I I definitely had like ve- like I'm an only child, so that's mm-hmm. part of it, but I also have like very like literally like I say like literally helicopter parents. So like mm-hmm. I remember one time I went to a uh uh, like my parents would rent out a cottage every summer and we like I went with like a friend of mine mm-hmm. we were like you know 16 or something we took a canoe out like took it just outside like out of sight of my parents so we could like smoke a joint yeah because we're you know dumb 16 year olds and uh when we came back to shore uh my excuse me my mom was on the phone with the RCMP oh the like God. you know like Canadian like yeah like the Mounties yeah. trying to get search helicopters looking for us holy shit yeah, see, like, that's, that's the kind of thing. So they were so, literal, yeah. literal helicopter parents. Yeah, that's yes. like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. like we're misusing literally. I, I, I guess, I guess, I, I guess that's a kind of a great example, right, of like this, this, this social paranoia that there's just like evil mm-hmm. people lurking around every corner, and it leads to people thinking that like, oh yeah, maybe my neighbor is is secretly running a child feminization factory. Um, oh god, oh no, what about that? Oh shit. And then it's stoked on I mean, by people like this. My mom literally, like, at one point was like, like, she would, like, she would search my room, like, I don't know if you remember, did you see that thing that was, like, that very obviously staged, uh, like, it was that news broadcast about, like, this normal looking room yeah. actually could be hiding drugs. If you like go beyond just like the hilarious posts that it was, yeah. the, they, it was for this website that was like, search every part of your child, your child's room. This like hair, like hair blower. That's actually for drugs. Jesus. I did grow up like that. Like my parents would like search my room every night or like every day while I was at school, like to the point where I got into making my room extremely messy because then I could tell if they had searched it. 
and it didn't work in keeping oh, me off really? drugs. I fucking, oh, wow. I fucking love drugs, but um, I, uh, <laughs> I just stopped in trusting Minecraft. my parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it will, it will destroy, um, it will destroy your relationship with your parents. I think that's like super destructive, and yeah. like, uh, God, I. Like the uh, there's there's so many there's so much political commentary that could be said about like how our society has become like a, a hyper surveillance state and how that has trickled down into parents becoming surveillance parents like I mean God like mm. like this this stuff that's like oh like the people who have security cameras that are that are used their Google Home has like security cameras so they can keep an eye on their kids while they're at work it's like oh Jesus like. Oh, it's so yeah. sinister. It's so sinister. Yeah, I don't I don't mm. like that at all. Yeah, no. me neither. Um, ah, yeah, I don't know. Real uh, thing though. I think you should probably monitor your kid on the internet, but uh yeah. also in real life uh, you know, let him I mean, it depends. Like even that is like is, you know, a tricky thing, especially with, you know, since like um um, you know, like uh like people like you know like queer kids and stuff like i'm sure that can be like a big issue yeah. too and like i don't know i remember there was that like there's some like conservative like person on twitter who posted about how like google sent their kid a uh, thing because the parents turned on parental monitoring and google was like your parents are monitoring this like that is just their policy for any time anyone turns on like their like monitoring feature they send a message to the person being monitored you are being I mean monitored yeah, I think that's which that's I think the way is it done, correct. Right? But they, yeah, yeah they, like they, the parents made this whole thing about how like this is so fucked up that Google would do this and how like how dare how dare they let like us so, how how dare they don't yeah. let us use their their product as a surveillance tool mm. without some stipulations. Urgh. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Um, anyway. Also, sorry, just like real quick replying to. Uh, sorry, by the way, for our chat, like we we're normally pretty good about responding to the chat, but when we've got guests, we kind of tend to not do as well but uh for um i think uh jj saying uh i was just really good at hiding stuff or my parents were just uh happy they only found weed stuff i mean i i got so good at hiding stuff have you you, you guys have seen no country for old men right mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i hid my weed by duct taping it to the inside of the air vent in my room <laughs> damn <laughs> yeah i knew some tricks as well uh one of my one of my friends who is trans um used to hide her uh her like clothing and makeup in a little pouch and uh what what she would do is she would tie a rope around the pouch and then she would you know those like panel ceilings you can lift up you yeah know, like yeah. They, they go like that so she would lift up the panel like and then an she office would, yeah yeah but she oh, would, i like, hid stuff in those panels yeah, too, but yeah she would she would not just hide it in the panel she would toss it down and it would fall down in between the wall you know because there's like space ah. in between the walls and then she would take a small piece of tape and tape the rope at the top of the you know panel, and then replace the panel. So even if the parents decide to search it, there's like no chance that they would have noticed some random rope just falling off in between the walls. And that's where it was. And she could pull the rope and and get the stuff out. Wild Damn. the stuff that kids have to go that's go genius. to to just express themselves ba on like a basic level. Mm -hmm. Yep. I took all my secret stuff and put it in a bag that hung off the corner of my bed. Yeah, <laughs> there you yeah. Go. and I'm sure everyone found it and was like, "This kid's gross." Well, all when, kids are. When gross. my mom did real like didn't realize I didn't want her searching my room, she accused me of being a member of a fight club. Nice. Which um, you know, demon mom, I don't think that you know me that well, but I feel like you probably got the sense that I wasn't in a fight club at 14. I don't know. I don't know. You, well, look, like, you look like the type. It was your alter ego, Tyler Durden. Yeah, it was your alter ego. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Started the fight. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic well awesome. let's continue let's, uh, let's get back to the video let's, yeah let's we, jump, we, we, we've we've pause andied this yeah, for so yeah. long i love it i love it i'm here for oh, it oh it's it's great it's mm. great yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't want to have oh wow that is a low blow uh, okay well maybe i didn't but i am moving forward he's the one who's still living in the glory days with his friend daryl yeah yeah and yeah. let's talk about daryl because i had a trophy from when he won the bowling championship in our bedroom i come home the other day she's got thrown in the trash yeah i did throw it in the trash because daryl is a literal criminal so were you at the time and maybe i don't want to be reminded of that every single day yeah, in my own this bedroom sums her right up. she only wants to talk about the bad parts of daryl not the fact that daryl was a fucking legend oh god would you consider paying for health care for the kids if she agrees to trash you online less no. no and you know what another thing about daryl is a lot better than her friends because all they do is talk shit about me oh, so sorry i i don't understand a daryl metaphor what is that supposed to the be the general metaphor is confederate confederate statues yeah oh is that what it is stupid yeah oh, that's just like that just fails on daryl is a literal criminal but he's also a fucking legend 
It's a literal criminal, but a fucking legend. And also, Ooh, like, how shit. frequently wow. do you... How... I wasn't expecting to hear a slavery defense in this video. Yeah, Jesus but I mean, also, like, Christ. how do you... Uh, how do you how do you bridge the like how do you bridge the gap between like do people do do couples usually keep like the trophy of their friend winning why why doesn't Daryl have that why doesn't Daryl have the yeah. trophy huh that's a real yeah. question yeah. who stole the it from Daryl sort of breaks down here a little it bit, really yeah. does yeah they they failed Daryl used to be a part of me yeah. and then he tried to leave he was my Siamese twin <laughs> like, well maybe what, what, maybe this what? is a maybe this is a Tyler Durden moment. Yeah. Or is yeah. he telling on himself? You are Daryl. Yeah, he is Daryl. Uh... He was Daryl. And I, I like that I like that she I did I do like that she said that you used to be a criminal too, implying that this guy literally owns slaves if we keep the uh if we keep the, yeah. the, the metaphor going. How nice. Well that's that. what you're saying, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the that's the crime. Yeah, that's Any the crime, crime is the slavery, yeah. Wow. Oh my god. Me and then she agrees with them publicly. Yeah, it's called holding you accountable. He trash talks me for helping. Your helping is just calling me an asshole. Hmm? Yeah, I think you two should split up. Daryl sounds sick though. <laughs> <laughs> Before you leave to attend to your own. Just a little bit of natural uh, laughter there. Wait, wait, oh, wait. wait. So Daryl sounds project. sick. What the analogy? If you follow the metaphor, the Confederacy sounds sick. Yep. Yes. N nice, dude. Yep. Nice. That's yeah. Nice. That is, uh, yeah. Nice immune. Uh, very nice. Uh, very yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Weird way to end a comedy sketch. Anyway, the Confederacy was sick. Yeah, dude. Confederacy. And then everyone la breaks character and laughs. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good one. Uh huh. That was that was a very spontaneous uh, joke there. Okay. I I uh I gotta say I, I, if I if I had to rate the comedy level of this uh, I'm gonna rate it pretty low I think we had a much more funny conversation in the like inserted uh, oh. pause Andes yeah a hundred percent yeah a hundred percent higher quality level of comedy and, yeah uh, yes absolutely true, true. wait um, can we show wait is there is are, are there any recent Ben Banks <laughs> oh I have oh. this is this is okay. some true darkness so Demon Mama. Uh, Brian Wong, the guy who was like the blonde guy from that sketch, is oh. sort of this like local hero in terms of like Canadian comedy, okay. where he's like, you know, like all the like edge lords are like, whoa, this guy made it's it. So cool. So we the, we have copycats it's, who he's are like created the a type phenomenon of who, like, in the Toronto comedy scene. Oh no, hmm, the type of people who look at that and are like, damn, I wish one day I could be that good. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> God. That's shocking. That's sad. I mean, I guess there are people like that with Ben Shapiro too, right? Which is a horrible thing to think about. Mm. There's people who are like, oh, I, I mean, want to. Ben be Shapiro is like that with Rush Limbaugh. You know, people get inspired and they Ooh. want to just kind of which which sucks because you know Rush Limbaugh. Here's the thing: I have a lot to say about Rush Limbaugh. I grew up listening to Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh is a horrible, oh, so much better. Yeah. At Comedy? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go, go ahead. Yeah, know. no, no. I was gonna say he's 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 a horrible monster, but he's an incredible showman. The guy was act like Ooh. his show was actually funny. Like he actually put in effort. It wasn't just this like um you can't spell uh crap without rap in it. Checkmate atheists. Yeah. <laughs> and then like six ads. It's not like that. Yeah. Like Rush Limbaugh literally built. Like this is the thing. This is one of the things I talked about when Rush Limbaugh died. We did a uh, a Rush Limbaugh spite stream where I streamed all day talking about uh, Rush Limbaugh and making fun of him and, and basically dancing on his grave because he deserves it. Um, oh, yeah, but absolutely. Rush Limbaugh Almost built... no one has done more harm than uh, Rush Limbaugh yep. did as an entertainer. Than... Yeah, he built an empire that, that uh, like, I mean, his show was the most popular radio show in the world, and it's still way up there, even though he's not around. And uh, the network that he built of just setting up all of talk radio with his little toadies and, and clones is just ridiculous but it's like i don't know does i don't think ben shapiro has the uh i don't think ben shapiro has the spine and the 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 will to do anything like that i don't see anybody who's like able to take rush limbaugh's shoes right now and that's a good thing for us the way i see it mm. you know too many um, no absolutely agree yeah yeah there's there's that is a very good thing yeah it's good not to have talented showmen i mean i don't know maybe trump Trump has that sort of natural showman vibe, but he can't run a radio show. Not, the thing that not made... to the same extent, though, mm -hmm. as Limbaugh. Yeah, yeah. The Limbaugh right. was able to just penetrate everything because, like, Rush Limbaugh ran hours every single day of his show on the radio. People would dr would listen to him like for hours while they drive to work, while they're at work. Rush Limbaugh was 
pervasive. He was everywhere. Um, and Trump can't do that. Not even Trump can do that. There's no, you know, Trump doesn't run a show where he can like bend the minds of people for for three hours every single day. And I don't know if there's anybody. I don't know if there's anybody on the right who can actually do that. But who knows? Uh, maybe there's going to be a lefty so, who will be able to do better. So yeah, um, this is so, an appropriate sorry, James, this guy I, because he is like sort of like I mean, the new James. I just sent you. To... I think it's the worst possible sketch we could find for this guy. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's a good way to introduce him because he is sort of like the Ben Shapiro to uh, Ryan Long's um, uh, Rush Limbaugh. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that, but I, and like Ben Shapiro, he has achieved quite a bit of success, I would say. Okay. Uh, for um, do you know? Have you ever heard of uh, Rebel Media? I have heard of Rebel Media. Yeah. Yeah. So Rebel Media is sort of like the like underground like like it's Canada doesn't exactly right. have like a Fox News, yeah, yeah. but like they they basically like turned into the right part of Canada. Isn't that like Lauren Southern um, was involved with them for a while? Yes. Okay. Lauren yeah. Southern got her start there. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So this is um he be- oh, this guy became the in house comedian for Rebel Media until he got fired for being too shitty. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. He was Let's getting his it. sketches posted on their like two million subscriber youtube page and getting like less views than my like six thousand subscriber youtube like Ooh. yeah uh, yeah they, they were not a just hit. the dregs all right let's see hit. it hit me with it let's see how bad it is let's let's check it out oh i think you need to unmute it on your end uh james oh, yeah it looks oh, like the it facebook thing has a little x next to it yeah for some reason yeah yeah uh, so right, this is transgender jews for palestine Ooh, wow. Oh. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. All right, let's see it. Yeah, let's see it. Yet. My name is Anne Frank. I'm name. a Jew that supports Palestine. And Frank, is that's a pun on his name, Ben Bankus. I so, get just it. Just so you guys mm. yeah, just love, I love I it. I know you'd be confused if you didn't. Yeah, the way, the way I like to open a set is by making fun of Anne Frank, a person who totally deserves being made fun of. Yeah, yeah. Classic, definitely. Yeah. just Classic. punching bag. Absolutely. Especially when you're going to, like, spuriously call a bunch of people anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, be- <laughs> best way. This seems like the best way. Palestine. Route. Everything's fine. Uh, I've been in an attic for three years, but it, everything's fine. I thought if I posted Jews for Palestine with my friend Rebecca, they would spend... Oh my god, it's another guy like that. Okay, so there's this a Daniel Boardman, people. another dude who d- who's trying to be the new Ryan Long. Oh, this man. guy, no, this guy is trying to. He looks at Ben Shapiro and is like, "God, I wish I was that charismatic." <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real, for real. I, I, I've, I've gone a long time not wanting to go after this guy because um, he's smaller than me and will always be that. But um, <laughs> he, uh, he did dox me very early on. Oh so fuck shit! Him. What a yeah, fucking piece of shit. They would yeah. spam me. I hear people say I'm a transgender rabbi. I, I'm, I'm not really. I'm a woman who just happens to be a rabbi. I'm also the founder of Transgender Jews for Hamas. As you can see, what is the joke there? Yeah, I, I don't, get, don't get it. Well, no, I, I, I mean, I joke? can tell you I'm what not the joke is. Also, um, I just want to take a quick moment to point out, uh, he posted the uh, logo for If Not Now, which is actually a very dope leftist Jewish organization that is fucking sick about calling out all kinds of like you know social injustices and playing for yeah like um uh yeah great good things they're anti-zionist they are pro like social justice and just a great organization for uh jews who want to be jews but not pieces of shit yeah yeah um i mean the thing is like i don't know the joke here is that they're Jewish and they're trans. That's the joke. The joke is, haha, yeah. let's laugh at the fact that it's that it's that Adam Sandler. Oh look, it's funny because this person is uh insert fat, uh insert minority, right. insert whatever. That's that's what makes it funny. And I guess that's the joke. Mm. But I guess I don't know. No, like, I, I don't really think there is a fully formed joke here. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. Like, I don't even I, know what I don't, the, I don't get what... the like happens to be a rabbi thing. I don't get what that. I don't know what that yeah. means. I don't know what that's a reference. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it, no, is, no, no, no. I can, I can explain this I'm a, not, a bit. It's, I'm um... not really transgender. I'm or I'm not really a transgender Jew. I'm a Jew or, or a transgender rabbi. I'm a rabbi who happens to be a woman, okay. and I'm the founder of Transgender Jews for Palestine. Okay. And it's yeah. like, what is that a reference so you to? Something are or? transgender what? do you like what the fuck am i supposed to think sam can, you, you said you, i mean i don't you, you I, I mean oh sorry i, I didn't fully ca- catch all of that stuff like um so i mean i was just gonna say that it, it's um actually yeah no i i don't know i don't fully know i mean i'm sense. guessing 
I don't think, I don't really get it. I'm guessing he's going at the idea that it's, like, absurd that, like, women could be rabbis, which is some, like, fucking, like, orthodox Jew shit, mm-hmm. which I don't think that he's on, but yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, li- I think we call, I think what we call this in the uh, world of comedy is a, a bomb. He's bombing yeah. the so joke. I just want to make this very clear. This guy, Ben Bank, or sorry, not Ben Bank, is uh, Daniel Boardman, uh, quit comedy <laughs> because... Knows. You can't, uh, because in his words, you can't uh, be successful in comedy if you're to the left of Stal or you're to the I right of Stalin. I love that. Nice. Yeah, his whole fucking post. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so I know. Your, Listen, I love my just... Stalinist comedians. I go and see them every Friday night. Oh yeah, they're yeah, the yeah. best ones. <laughs> very, very good uh, stuff. There's stuff about killing anarchists a little bit much for me, but yeah, uh, a bit weird. You know, they're, they're... Comedy is supposed to push boundaries. Edgy, you know, they're yeah. they're, they're, they're on the edge. <laughs> It's all good. Not really. I'm a woman who just happens to be a rabbi. I'm also the founder of Transgender Jews for Hamas. As you can see, we're starting to regret our decision. I thought about posted Jews for Palestine and chanted death to Israel with them at Young and Bluer that they would spare me. How do you convince all the Jews to just not want to exist? My grandmother made... Okay, so I mean, I do actually get what his joke was now, was that he was, uh... He, so I my I, my guess is of that joke about the rabbi thing is that he's like I'm not I'm not a female rabbi I'm just a rabbi who happens to be female, um, which you know uh because he thinks it's like I guess he thinks but that it's he, not what, okay what for there to is, be women rabbis. What he says is I'm not a transgender rabbi. I'm a rabbi. Who oh been. oh no no so yeah no never mind it was just okay, it's just yeah, it's just, just it was transphobia all along. Okay. It's, just transphobia and not really a joke. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know, I think there's and no. So is the joke here that. that like is the reason why the other person is like, um, like rocking back and forth? Is it because they're like, um, like they're hiding mm-hmm. in a bomb shelter or something? Is that what they're trying to say? Yeah, they're, they're, they're he's saying Anne that they're, he's Anne Frank. They're saying that any Jews yeah. that support Palestine are capos. They're they're oh. going to be. They're just people who were like siding with the Nazis during it, which is not what Anne Frank did, so weird comparison, but so this I think is just he's supposed to be like in an attic. Complete nonsense. Yeah, complete complete yeah. nonsense. Complete fantasy. But he's like saying like, oh yeah, like those are the like those are the the like problematic amount of anti Semitism is just it doesn't come from like the right wing, which those guys oh. both are very much on. It comes from, you know, um uh like pro Palestine protests. Oh, which right. like to be fair there have been some quite anti Semitic pro Palestine things, but at the same time it's not anti-Semitic to be anti-Zionism at all. Yeah. And they're saying, like, oh, the only reason that Jews are siding, or, like, being opposed to uh, Zionism is because they want to be spared, and they won't be. Interesting. This is a ghost written by Eve Barlow. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Call Simon <laughs> and chanted death to Israel with them at Young and Bluer that they would spare me. How do you convince all the Jews to just not want to exist? My grandmother made this mistake. She joined Jews for Hitler. We all know how that turned out. all, this is uh, Rebecca, uh, transgender from Hamas. Uh huh. Rebecca started transgender Jews for Palestine. Rebecca, transgender for Hamas. Hello, kill the Jews, yep. please. When? All of them now. All of us. It's just a competition to see who gets in the oven last. My gay friend just got stoned to death in Ramallah. They cut my balls off and threw me off the roof. Thank God I'm okay. And part of our organization's goal was to promote peace uh, with a... You know, I, I do find it, like, super disingenuous when Zionists and, like, conservatives will talk about, you know, Gaza or Palestine as being, like, very, like, homophobic yeah. or, you know, whatever. Because it's like, yeah, obviously, like, you know, we're not on board with uh, homophobia. But I think right now it's a bigger deal that there is a group of people being... Uh, ethnically cleansed and uh, you know apartheided and genocided. That's well, it's concern trolling too. More urgent issue. Like it's concern yeah. trolling too. Like they're like the 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 irony of like uh, of a conservative pointing at like the Middle East's equivalent of conservatives. You know, and they're like those guys. Oh, yeah. the, you you want you want to you want to support their they stereotype all of the, all it, people who all Muslims this exactly the same. Like, well, you, those people want to mm. throw you off a roof. Well, then how are we gonna get to throw you off a roof if they do it first? <laughs> Checkmate, lib. And it's like, mm. dude, you're you literally advocate for the exact same world. Like, you're not better. Like, fucking. Demon, 
if I may, I think I, I think there's a slight. I, I would slightly disagree. I think that what they want is like I, I have a big theory that like when people like to like point out like deviant stuff, it's yeah. because they want to do something that's slightly less bad. People like you know intervention or like, people like you know to catch a predator because it makes them not feel bad about like liking barely legal porn. You know, people yeah. like intervention because it makes them not feel bad about you know smoking weed or having a drinking problem. Maybe, um, yeah. I mean, I think my... that's part of it. But at the same time, I also think it's like it feels like this, like this, uh, this plight to be like, oh yeah, you think we're bad? Well, look at them. But it's like, but then again, you look at it and it's like, well, but you guys did the same thing. Like you conservatives were the people who were lynching people. You conservatives were the ones who fucking marched, marched gay people in America into death at the hands of AIDS. Like you literally repressed information mm. that would have saved people's lives. So I don't know. Like, uh, maybe there's, maybe there's like. In, cert in certain areas of the world, maybe there's like a re like certain areas that are so gripped with religious fundamentalism that it is really like that hostile. But then again, it's like, I don't know. We just talked about a story of some fucking conservatives beating beating up a, a, a fellow trans streamer like a hate crime. Like the same shit happens here. It's like you people are the same people. Like It's the same mentality. It's this hyper conservative mm. um, like. Uh, like repression it's like you're just a few steps away if we if we give you ground you're going to be doing this in two in, in 10 years i mean one that, interesting thing that I, I mean uh... my, sorry I was, james what, what i was just trying to say with though was that like israel is not like like queer friendly like gay marriage isn't legal in israel mm -hmm. israel is you not like, like what we would consider like a progressive gay government friendly country but in the I, middle east but I think that what they, they that's uh, the thing that was that's my theory and like maybe I could be wrong here but my my theory is that they want to press that as that is what liberal progressive pro like LGBT stuff should look like mm -hmm. you know uh, we don't allow gay marriage or like you know accept trans people but we aren't violently killing them and that like like it, it's doing double duty as not only being Islamophobic but it's also making the case that. That's where the Overton window should be. That's what progressivism should be towards yeah, like LGBT mind. issues. Yeah. Is that not like killing them? Well, it's yeah. really funny I, too. I, I do want to also point out this uh, this interesting study from uh, U.S. Muslims that um, now, or this is from uh, I don't know a couple years ago, uh, 2017. 52 percent of Muslim Americans uh, now agree that homosexuality should be accepted by society. The lowest group on this uh, study was white evangelical Christians who uh, mm -hmm. were pulled, saying only 23% of them oh said God. homosexuality should be accepted by society. So within America, uh, Muslims are more than twice as likely to be accepting of uh, queer people than evangelical Christians. So I don't know. Mm, I, yeah. I think that the whole idea that Islam is necessarily homophobic is total bullshit and should never be like taken seriously and is just a fucking concern trolling way for conservatives yeah. who have never cared before about how accepting of the lgbtq community a group is mm. can pretend that they suddenly do which we've brought up on this stream before it's uh, mm. suddenly oh we care about gay people suddenly we care about you know women's sports suddenly we care about like whatever and it's all just a way to target a group yeah uh, it is yeah it, it, it's, it's all instrumentalized it's very machiavellian it's also it's really interesting that you that you mentioned some of this because um i, I recently did a video um which i launched uh was it today i guess it was it was this morning i launched the actual video itself but i did it a couple days ago it was i did a history mama segment on uh, a guy named uh dr magnus hirschfeld i don't know if you've ever heard of him um, he was yeah. the, he was, um, arguably the first, like, known doctor who actually offered, like, compassionate care to trans people. Um, he was a German Jew, um, who ran the Institute for Sexual Studies, um, which was, if you've ever seen that infamous picture of, like, the Nazi kids, mm -hmm. like, throwing, that was, those, the books that were being thrown in were the books on, uh, on gay, lesbian, bisexual and transsexual a term which he uh he actually coined the term transsexual those books were the research that his life's work him and his institutes like life work were being burnt in that photo which is almost never brought up but um it's really funny because previous to the rise of hitler um he was basic he was like deeply involved in these uh sort of um very public uh uh these very public um trials and 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 hearings about uh 
about this the the social state of homosexuality in Germany. And one of the things that he was known for sort of pointing out was that the um the the actual like the the state of of being gay that society was so hostile to gay people at the time um not like li- like not even so much as um as like as like beating people up or killing them or whatever but it was but blackmail was insane was was just ridiculously common at the time to the point that he literally made a movie about it he helped produce a movie that was about a gay guy getting blackmailed blackmail was incredibly common um disown being disowned by your family was incredibly common these are the precursors to the stuff that allows yep there's the picture right there um Mm. and uh and um you know it's it's just interesting that that is the that is the the precursor to the sort of state of society that allows for like people to be rounded up and killed because you have to first uh sort of crowd people into the shadows so that they aren't seen so the bad things that happen to them aren't seen by the public and it was so bad this the social specifically and he fixated on how it was the social the way that people were treated the way that they were ostracized from society the fact that they were isolated and blackmailed and mistreated and made fun of and driven out of the public eye and incapable of engaging in society unable to get work this is the sort of stuff that lays the groundwork and that is the exact stuff that we see these conservatives essentially doing they're like oh well you know we're not tossing Mm -hmm. people off of buildings but we want you to be crowded into the corner and again like i said 10 years down the line well hey maybe we'll be there too yeah, it's not impossible to imagine, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, th- there is definitely, like, a uh, a thing with, with fascism where they're very uh, clear on, like, what they view as traditional gender roles mm-hmm. and very against anything outside of the box, uh, you know, trans people especially. But, um, it, yeah, it's, it's interesting. One of the first things that they did was burn all these uh you know books on research on trans people which i believe in germany at the time was like probably like one of the most uh research had been done on trans people of anywhere in the world world. there and it was literally burned yeah hirschfeld Uh, had literally traveled across the world to um to to study gender and and sexuality in like in like all over the world it was Mm -hmm. it's it's wild like um yeah it, it, it it's really wild uh to the degree to which Hirschfeld actually had gathered an, an unprecedented amount of information and you know there was no digital records at that time physical records being burned was mm. a, it was set back uh gay gay health and trans health for who knows we don't even know we don't even know there could have been things that were lost that we don't even know now yeah it's like the library of alexandria for uh yep trans mm. research yeah it was uh, yeah it very much fun. was yeah. um and but that was then this is now where jewish trans people are the new hit yes uh, exactly so let's uh let's keep let's keep watching this uh this bullshit mm-hmm. and part of our organization's goal was to promote peace uh with a group that explicitly wanted to murder every single Jew on the planet Zionism is israel so if you don't like Zionism, you hate Jews. How can I be so stupid? <laughs> uh, Zionism yeah. is Israel. So if you don't like Zionism, you hate Jews. There, I feel like there's a, a missing step in there somewhere. Well, didn't. Maybe it's that if you're that Israel doesn't represent all Jewish people on Earth, and you know Zionism. Yeah. Isn't is he trying to say that that's correct yeah i I don't know i feel like that was the wrong like he's doing the wrong he's trying to poke at the wrong straw man there sort of broke character yeah exactly Uh, it's not supposed to be like that but uh Mm -hmm. he he is he is giving his real thoughts at this point. yeah i guess yeah yeah broke character yeah i think that makes sense Mm -hmm. Mm. that explicitly wanted to murder every single Jew on the planet Zionism is is for you so if you don't like Zionism, if you hate Jews, how can I be so stupid? Okay, so. Oh, Harvey Palestine, oh, look at the Jew, get him! Get him! Get, oh, it's a transgender, get they! Get they! Oh. Yeah, uh, so that's fucking brutal. Jesus. Yeah. Hard to imagine more ways for everybody to be wrong than 
that that was yeah. that was absolutely piece of you you were definitely correct in saying that this is like the dark corner of cringe that was uh that was some nuclear <laughs> nuclear quality cringe highly refined oh yeah, yeah, yeah. highly refined handle with uh, the radioactive tongs uh, cringe of this level has <laughs> never been observed. Yeah, I before. love how yeah. I love how they end the joke by making it by by saying get them get them wait get they that doesn't even make sense. Again, like I was wait, just they, sitting there going, yeah, like, yeah. What? they they said get them already. Like, did they not notice that they already used like the gender neutral sing- singular <laughs> them? Uh huh. Very very bad very bad comedy. Uh, not funny. Not I funny. Would, I would go so far as to say. Not funny, mm. I would not say good. it's negative funny. I feel like I that, like laughs were stolen from me that I am I've now lost owed. Laughs. Yeah, I lost laughs. I think I, you know, yeah, they I say that like laughs. laughter increases your life. I feel like I shortened my life. Yeah. Next time I yeah, hear, yeah. hear a really funny joke, I'll be like making up for loss. I I won't even really like help me at all. Mm. Like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's really funny. But yeah. you I won't be able to laugh. Like, the yeah. good jokes are gonna miss you. You've unintentionally yeah. your future has been uh. stolen by this. A piece of your future. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, you don't think that's funny? No, no, no. I do. Th- that's actually the funniest thing I've heard like, in, in my life. But this is just making back for yeah. all of the. I'm the, very the sorry. My, uh, my laugh yeah. organ has been broken, injured, injured in a terrible accident. <laughs> I watched some conservative yeah. comedy and it ruined my ability to laugh at anything. Now I'm severely, severely depressed and cannot laugh at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Um... Yeah. Um. So we could. So we got two options here. We okay. could watch um uh the uh there's a new PragerU kids video. Ooh, ooh, that sounds fun. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, we can do that, and then and after that, let's 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 wrap up on some candy. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. We uh yeah we we, we can we can find some like funny sketch comedy or something good, and then yeah enjoy that before we uh yeah. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Prager, you trying to heal the children. Should we should we give a bit of context on this, just real quick? Um, I don't know for what anyone who doesn't I can know. Possibly give to a dog, a furry. Okay, putting uh, look, a whoopee cushion on a chair. Y- look, I'm sorry, but to oh, for conservatives, th- there's a thing. There's this thing that happens is that I think that on most conservative teams, there's one person who is like secretly into a whole bunch of stuff i just find it very <laughs> ironic that they run a kid's show and the first thing that they do is come up with an excuse for a guy in a furry in a fursuit he is in a fursuit <laughs> to put down an inflatable fart balloon that someone is going to sit on and fart and like like that is just like okay you've got the like someone inflates erotic, you big and round uh, you know yeah. furry erotica at work at prager U and Dennis Prager coming around. What are you working on there? And he's like, "Oh, uh, the new script." And he's like, "Let's see." <laughs> One moment. Give me just a second. I gotta. I gotta and welcome in. Venture Pluto gets inflated. Wow. How did you come up with this? One this moment. Let me yeah, welcome yeah. in this raid real quick. Hold on. One second. I'll just. Uh, I just want to welcome it in. Oh, right. Vosh, yeah, yeah. thank you very, very much for the massive raid. Welcome, everyone. My name is Demon Mama. Right now, we are at the candy, or almost at the candy section of my podcast appearance on an amazing podcast called The Goat and the Goblin. I'm here with The Goat and the Goblin, who, uh, wait, hold on, wait. The Goat is also known as We're in Hell YouTube, so you might know We're in Hell. Uh, we're hanging out. We're watching conservative cringe. We have found some atomic conservative cringe so if you're in for some conservative cringe come on get comfy uh we would love to have you um as you know we have tons of 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 voshites and what we call vimps which are the vosh imps in my community so come on in and get comfortable if you want to use the emotes for free come on over to my website demonmama.com forward slash live you can sign in just like it was vgg it's almost like you never left except now i'm talking to you instead of vosh um yeah yeah Uh, which you know, that's pretty cool. So come on in and, uh, yeah. yeah, we'd love to have you. Also, consider giving a follow over to twitch.tv forward slash the goat and the goblin. They're super pog. We're having a lot of fun. We've been cringing and banting and goofing and gagging, and it's been great. So thanks oh, yeah. so much, uh, goofing. Yeah. So much gagging. Uh, hopefully, a lot of gagging. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, eat the cat. Uh, yeah, it, for, for anyone who's uh, checking this out who hasn't seen our stuff before, we're two bread tubers who are some soft boys. We don't we don't do debates. We're just uh we just like vibing. We uh, conflict. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we basically just uh, bring uh, cons- uh, like uh, we bring content creators who we think are really cool on here, and we just hang out and joke around with them, and then we ruin their day by showing them the cringest content we can. And uh, yeah, let's start from the beginning. I feel like people need to see that uh, cartoon intro again. Yeah, let's do the cartoon. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. This is the this is the latest uh, Prager U attempt to reach out to children. Mm-hmm. Uh, Always it, a good know, thing when it's, Prager is reaching midnight. towards your child. You know where your kids are. Yeah. Are they watching Prager U videos right now? <laughs> if so, Here's the secret: they're not. This if if you're not forcing your if you're not forcing <laughs> your kid to watch this, they will not watch this. This shit is so boring. They they won't uh, they won't jump in. Um, and yeah, sure, right, right, Dripping. Good point. I'll plug my channel too. Uh, subscribe to me, uh, Chill Goblin, on YouTube. Um, but let's Sorry let's get that. into this I video. That one. It's called All Good, All Good. Story time. Otto's Tales. Mm. King Alfred and the Cakes. All right, let's oh, do this it. Sounds fun. For a guy in a fur suit. Start out. Nice. Cool. Inflates you up big and round. Hi, sorry I'm late. <laughs> Otto? <laughs> Were you trying to teach me a lesson about being late? <laughs> Yes, well, you're right. I shouldn't have been late. Cons- conservative pranks but always have now. a lesson attached. Always, they a- always have to have like a, <laughs> a, a, a any prank, prank has to be a morality, morality tale. tale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> being being late, you will fart if you're late. You, you, listen, everybody, what you've learned now is that uh, if you are late, you will become gassy, and everyone will make fun of you and laugh at you, and then you will get very embarrassed, and you will blush, and then it will get posted uh, to your uh, FetLife account. Um, uh-huh, yeah. yeah, because it's very <laughs> humiliating. Kink as well as the furry. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. We got it. I like the idea of just, you know, like, just every conservative prank is like drawing a dick on someone who fell asleep's face, and it's like, oh yeah, but that was because they they succumbed to the the sin of slothfulness. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love succumbing to the sin of slothfulness. My favorite. Oh, what? You drew yeah. a dick in my oh, face, and my I wrote thing. how you are living a degenerate lifestyle in Sharpie on your other cheek. <gasps> oh, yeah. Fun <laughs> fact. Fun fact for anyone who doesn't know this. Uh, one of one of, uh, one of of the most funny things that we've ever discovered is uh, is uh, P- uh, Dennis Prager's three-part blog about how he believes his wife shouldn't be able to say no to sex. He wrote... Yes. Yep. Yes. Real thing. Oh, no. It's real. It's still up. It hasn't been taken I've down. You can still go yeah. read it. This is amazing. Wait, wait, I think it's called yeah. like when a woman isn't in the mood. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. basically yeah. says like you're not allowed to say no, and I'm just like, can you imagine that? Like, I'm sorry, that is such a grotesque image. The thought of like, like of, oh god, it's such cry bully shit too. Like he like acts like it's abuse. Like it's like the man just feels so rejected and unattractive, and yeah. like it's so it's, fucked. And, god, he's like, and he's just like, and he's just like. Like, like, fucking the one of those at what is it? What's the what's the Ammon 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 animations or what's it called? I can't remember. Yeah, the yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, like Dennis Prager with like four hundred arms, like sl- like sludging his way over. Honey, you can't say no to me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Jesus Christ! Oh, yeah, Dennis Prager. Yeah, what a, what a total piece of shit. Anyway, Dennis Prager wanted to make a children's cartoon. Uh, let's just start it with morality. Let's right. do it. Let's, let's keep, keep going. Welcome to Otto's Tales. Story time brought to you by Prep. Prager used resources for. Ed- oh, by Prep. Oh yeah, I uh, forgot they're promoting they're Prep. You know, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if they did that intentionally to cloud search results for Prep. Honestly, they're that they're oh, that God. vicious and evil. Whatever. I thought it was funny when I they, it was a mistake, but you know what? I can totally see that. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, yeah. I believe Prager used resources for educators and parents. I'm Jill, and today I'm going to share an old legend from England about a king who, well, learned another kind of great big lesson. It's called King Alfred and the Cakes. Once upon a time, many years ago, there was a powerful king named... The Otto! I thought it was these were supposed to be Otto's tale. Well, yeah, but Otto is the dog telling the tale. And it's about King Alfred, whoever the fuck that is. Is oh, King Alfred Otto's a real like, person? Uh, I was like uh, Chud Wishbone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was Chud Bone. 
Damn. I was hoping that it would just, like, out of, like, so, the, the deep reverence that they have for, like, Western culture, that it would have just been, like, Arthurian myths out of, like, La Morte d'Artour. Oh, like, they just, like, tell old... the story of Sir, Gar- Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I mean, that would yeah, be it's pog, old though, English <laughs> king shit, though. Yeah. It, there's mm-hmm. pretty much going down that... Everybody knows that King road. Alfred. Come on. And his yeah. kings? Oh, yeah. oh. Well, I mean, I don't, Alfie. like, James, I don't know if you know, like, like or uh, or demon like uh, the the way that like early like like middle age like medieval like uh tales were written it was insane like they, yeah, these yeah. are fucking wild shit yeah yeah like, they had a totally different standard for like what made a good story and it's just like i don't know i guess we're gonna yeah, find yeah. out when like something now, like, like, that's where it ends what yeah 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 you're just like oh okay cool oh, I guess. she just reads in middle english <laughs> that'd be awesome uh, uh, that would be now that would be entertaining but see that that would break i would legit of... be like i'm sold this is fucking sick yeah <laughs> let's yeah. keep going king alfred and the cakes once upon a time many years ago there was a powerful king named alfred he was wise he was strong he was one of the best kings england ever had there was but he was still a fucking monarch and uh, that's not allowed all right true no gods no masters anyway yeah, <clears throat> sorry uh, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah fucking the of course prager used like do it like doing like fucking pro monarchy oh totally tales for children yeah again they yeah. they are part of that faction that i said literally that they literally at the end of the day they do not they believe in democracy. democracy yeah yeah they don't want that they shit don't. they yep. want you to, as a king I mean, like, he was a great king who was much better than anyone the people elected to rule them? He was Ugh. wise and blessed by God. Imagine? I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. I feel like there are lots of like kid stories that do like. Oh yeah, he was a good and just king. I think Prager U is gonna add an extra twist to make this extra fucked up. Let's see. That's yeah, my right, theory. Let's That's pretty like this is gonna go well beyond like you know a, a good and just king to like yeah no and like all the peasants were fucking idiots and democracy is a sham. <laughs> <laughs> I buy it. I buy it. I buy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ever <laughs> had. There was trouble in King Alfred's kingdom. Someone rigged the election against him with voting machines. Oh no, please don't tell me that's going to Uh-oh. ...invaded by another <laughs> army from across the sea. Uh-oh. They Uh-oh. fought, and they fought, and they fought. King Alfred didn't want to lose his kingdom, but his army struggled, was broken apart, and scattered across the land. Ha, what a cuck! ...to defeat their enemy. <laughs> sorry. Lost. I'm sorry. King Alfred had to escape and disguise himself as a shepherd so no one would find him and he could hide he wandered through he was he sucked at being a shepherd oh my god he just showed up with those sheep sheep immediately knew this guy had never done this before just embarrassed himself wait so like the king like left his dudes behind to get like fucked up by the vikings and then he just was like i'm gonna go <laughs> yeah. hide fuck you guys i like that very yeah. valiant yeah, very yeah, valiant yeah. and brave he was a good king yeah. he cared about his people but when his people were under attack he courageously dressed up like a shepherd and, and sulked off into the woods. He bravely oh, ran he away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> could hide. He wandered through woods and swamps. Soon, he came upon a hut that belonged to a woodcutter and his wife. Tired and very hungry, King Alfred knocked on the door. He asked for something to eat. The woodcutter's wife said, come in, and Uh-oh. had no idea who he was. She told him, I'll give you something to eat if you will watch these cakes I'm baking on my stove. Watch them. Okay, I feel like we should all like take our best guess at what the moral of this story is going to be. I think what's uh, going to happen is that the husband is going to come back and he's going to be mad. The, the husband's going to come back and he's going to be mad because at first he's going to be like, oh, were you, is, are you, my, my wife is, chi- are you fucking my wife? And then he's going to be, and then, and then King <laughs> Alfred will be like, King Alfred's going to be like, no, I'm not fucking your wife. And then the lumberjack will be like, prove it. Get down on your knees and suck my cock. And then King Alfred will be like, no. And then it would be like, and then the, the moral of the story is going to be that like he had the resilience to re- refuse. Uh, he, even though he was hungry for the, for the cakes, he refused to suck the wood, the woodcutter's giant log. And so that makes him a, 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 like a, like a virtuous person or something. That's my guess. This is my prediction. I think I'm 100% right. Honestly, yeah, maybe the. the, the, the I, I had some dumb shit planned, but that's that's probably right. I was gonna, I was gonna say this is about like birthright. This is gonna be like, oh, 
they they didn't they they weren't as generous as they should have been without realizing that he's rightfully the king and therefore deserves everything that they own by birthright. Uh, no, I, I think I, I know what it's going to be. I think it's probably going to be the cocksucking. Yeah, though. I think it's the cocksucking. The ending is going to be that uh, King Alfred is himself the cakes. Oh, he gets baked into a cake? Oh, you could be right. Yeah. That'd be a little bit of a bit of weird turn, but I think it's the cock thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. My Uh, money's on cock. Yeah, no, I think it's the cock thing, and he gets frosted at the end. Yeah, 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 that's where it comes from. That's why it's all about King Alfred's cakes. Oh, shit. On my stove. Watch them carefully and don't let them burn, she said. The king agreed, and the woodcutter's wife left. King Alfred tried to pay attention to the cakes, but he allowed his (laughs) mind to daydream. He thought about his army. He thought about his people. What? Did you sort of just forget that, like, thousands of people were just murdered at the beginning of this story? What? Well, yeah. Okay. I also, like, I love how they, like, frame it as, like, a cool thing that he's just completely incapable of doing any type of, like, remotely useful labor. Wait, okay, so is this gonna be, like, <laughs> like is this gonna be basically, like, that, like, oh, the king is, shouldn't have to cook cook food because he needs to think about the business of the... I don't know. I'm actually lost. I, I like honestly. Yeah, my yeah. Guess he's is gonna like, he's gonna let the cakes burn. Then yeah. they're gonna be like, "How could you do that?" And he's gonna be like, "Actually, I'm the king." And they're gonna be like, "Oh no!" And then he's gonna kill them. No, no. I think <laughs> what's gonna happen is that he's gonna let the cakes burn. I'm revising my interpretation of the story. Previously, I thought it was gonna be like a cuckoldry kind of thing. You know, he had to he had to prove that he wasn't fucking the wife. But I think what's gonna happen now is that basically, uh, he's gonna he's gonna let the cakes burn. And then the wife is going to get really mad. And then the husband is going to be like, listen, there's only one way for you to make it up for me. These were our last cakes. The only way for you to let to get it up uh, to, to like fix this for me is to drain my fucking hog. And that's exactly where I think it's going to go from here. So I'm, I'm revising my prediction. You know yeah, no, I mean, that, you know, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot they have the same yeah. ending, but it got there organically both times. Yeah. And I think that's essentially all roads lead to you know, the hog. someone's massive yeah. hog getting drained at yeah. the end of this. We'll yeah. see. I think so. I think so. He wondered if he'd ever get back home to his land. King Alfred concentrated on his problems and forgot all about the cakes. Well, when the woodcutter's wife <gasps> came back, the hut was filled with smoke and her cakes were burned to a crisp. King Alfred didn't even notice. You lazy person! She yelled at King Alfred. You lazy person. Conservatives trying not to use slurs. Uh, yeah, I, I think she was about to drop a fucking... <laughs> yeah, she was about to say... She was about to fucking drop a drop a hard slur on him. She was about to fucking pull out the tea slur. <laughs> she's gonna drop a, she's gonna start, drop a slur, but it's like like outmoded racism, where yeah. it's like, um, you're, you're, you're practically Finnish! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, what? Huh? The kids are just like, what the fuck is <laughs> So we're fifty percent through this, and there's I have no idea what the actual like lesson is gonna be. <laughs> Alfred didn't even notice. You lazy person! She yelled at King Alfred. Look what you've done! You wanted something to eat, but you didn't do what you said you'd do, and now none of us will have any supper. King Alfred was embarrassed and ashamed. He learned to never ask for a handout ever again. Just then. The woodcutter came home. Oh, here it goes! Oh, here we go! Here we go, everybody! I told you! Here it comes! Get ready, everybody! Oh, I'm so ready! Woohoo! Gotta get my hog sucked by someone! He really was the king! Stop yelling! The woodcutter told his wife. This is our king! Now the wife was embarrassed and ashamed. What? She apologized. Did nothing wrong! Yeah, no, but, but yeah, she should have been like, okay, I didn't know he was a king, but he still fucked everything up. What the fuck, dude? So wait, is the, the is, wait? Oh my god, you is are... the is the is the lumberjack gonna end up sucking the king's cock? Is that what's gonna you end up happening? Oh, what a twist! I've been thrown. I've been thrown for a fucking oh, loop. God. Actually, you know what, Dima? I disagree. I think that the husband and wife are gonna fuck, and then the king is gonna watch. You think so? Mm. I mean, he does see. I, think that's I mean, where this is going. he's a daydreamer. Maybe, maybe he's a voyeur. Maybe that's. Like, I think. I think that that's going to be like his like penance for like you know letting the cakes burn. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Can... Yeah, okay. I can. Right feel, I feel to it. be upset. You gave me a job. I accepted, and then I didn't do the job I promised you I would do. I was now. Now I think that you two should have sex in front of me 
as my punishment, and I can't touch either of you. Yeah, yeah. and he's like, I'll even put on this gilded chastity cage that I snuck out of the gold yeah. out of the treasury. Yeah. I'm already wearing it. I have literally yeah. already. Yeah. Is not responsible, and anyone who accepts a responsibility, big or small, should do it faithfully and excellently, even if they are a king. The king thanked them for their hospitality and then left. Soon after, he found. Oh, he just thanked them and left. Oh man, <laughs> kind of rude. He's like he he like gives this whole speech about how shitty he is, and he's like, and now I take my leave. What? The fuck? <laughs> also, like they don't need to still treat him as a king. He l definitively lost a battle. And yeah, he's not right. their king anymore. He's a yeah. In fact, <laughs> what they should actually be doing if they were real patriots would be turning him into the Mongol horde that invaded their country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what the hell is going yeah. on? <laughs> also, okay, hold on a second. There is this. No okay, this is a weird memory, but I'm remembering this Christian. Um, this there's like this Christian chi like children's book series. Hold on. Book lion. It's got a lion. It's got like a lion king guy, a, a king. No, no, it's not that. Hold on, it's like um, a witch and a wardrobe. There's like this King Leon or something. Hold on, it's a Christian children's book of like King Leon, I think, or something. And he's like a, he's like a lion. And it had like they had these all these stories with different characters. I can't think of it now. I, now I'm never gonna be able to remember. Does anybody remember this? Is it Uncle Arthur? Is that what it is? Is it Uncle Arthur? Is that the one? No, that's not the one. That's not the one. No, it's not between the lions. Somebody is going to remember this. Somebody in chat is going to remember it. It's like these, um, they were like these, like, vaguely, I think it was made by Focus on the Family, maybe? Um, Lion King story. Oh, my God, I want to remember this so bad. But it just keeps bringing up the Lion King when I try to search that. But it was about this king who was like a lion, and there were all kinds of little things about it. Um... I swear to God, it was like focus on the family or something. I can't remember what it was called. Somebody knows. Somebody knows. Somebody in chat has to know this. Come on. It's like this. They had this. It was like the furry art style and everything. Whatever. Oh, really? Anyway, they were yeah. way, they were way better. They were way better than this. I don't know why. They, who, why don't they just buy pre-existing stories and then read them on the screen? Did they write this? for? Like, this is terrible. This story is terrible. <laughs> it's very bad, yeah. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I can't remember it off the top of my head now, but I will remember it at some point. It's going to hurt I my brain. I feel like they did write this just for this, and it's like supposed to talk about like personal responsibility. Yeah. And personal responsibility of, like, for some reason. Yeah, okay. All right, well, all right, I let's mean, see. The king doesn't seem to suffer any consequences. He's like, yes, I fucked up, and no one should fuck up like I did. I'm a piece of shit. Anyway, thanks for your hospitality. I'm out of here. Uh, lost my <laughs> Yeah. Found his army again and won his kingdom back. Oh, he found his army again and won his kingdom back. What well, the there's fuck? There's a ex machina right there at the end. After he fucked up some innocent woman's cakes, he gets his fucking kingdom back. Why, wait, okay. why did this need why to be about a king? Why couldn't this have just been a story about like a, like a person not doing their duty? Why did this have to be about a king? And why did they have to append him <laughs> being like, oh, I found my army, time to take back England. This is so weird. This is so stupid. The end. We love this tale because Why? it reminds us that no matter how small a job may seem, it is our duty to do that job well because attention to little duties often prepares, <laughs> little duties. <laughs> prepares us to meet larger ones in the future. Doing a small... <laughs> larger ones so wait, is this ultimately just going to be a personal responsibility story? About a, a yeah, king. Actually, yeah. yeah, obviously. Kings, notorious <laughs> well, for having personal responsibility. Oh, yeah, kings are the most responsible people for their, their little duties. Be ready for a bigger, <laughs> more important job later. Leadership and responsibility go together. And in America... Yeah, it sounds like he was a bad leader then. It sounds like he sucked if he was, wasn't personally responsible. Taking responsibility for our actions is a value we believe in. And that helps everybody. Now, are you responsible, Otto? <gasps> yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I mean, that's uh, that's some freak shit to throw into the kid show. Like, just, <laughs> yes, you are, Otto. 
Um, <laughs> oh my god, wait, people in my chat? Auto? People in my chat are telling me that this is a real legend. Hold on a second. I mean, yeah, this is a real apparently, legend. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nick's uh, dizzy in the chat here. Hold on. Uh, hold Alfred on. Great, the cake legend on Wikipedia. The cake um, legend. A legend tells how when Alfred first fled to the Somerset levels, he was given shelter by a peasant woman who, unaware of his identity, left him to watch some cakes. And preoccupied with the problems of the kingdom, Alfred let the cakes burn and was roundly scolded upon her return. There is no contemporary evidence for the legend, but it's possible there was an early oral tradition. The first time it was actually written about was a hundred years after. So, All right. Debunked Prager U. Never happened. This is All like right. anachronistic. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that seems like a stretch to me. And also, it seems like in the original, there wasn't anything about him than like going back out and like winning. It was just like a random story. It was like he burned some cakes. It's like I, yeah, this is, is like this not like is this not exactly what I was talking about like with with the uh with the whole being boring like what kid is gonna watch this and have fun Veggie Tales is like twenty times more pog than this oh Veggie Tales is actually quality you know Christian children's show yeah it is this is boring as fuck mm -hmm. not 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 yeah, that that's like a bad thing like, but like like watching it together is fine but I just can't believe anybody would put this on for their kids. In this yeah, yeah. in, the, in this uh, Wikipedia article, it's interesting how it's it's uh, it's uh, arranged here. Uh, there's a whole section, of the King at War, where he talks about this whole um, battle he was in, mm -hmm. and then it goes with the cake legend mm -hmm. after he, I guess, fled, and then it goes, and then after the cake legend, it goes counterattack and victory. And so I guess he actually did, uh, you know, at one point was losing, fled the castle, came back and won, uh, but. They concentrated on the most corny, useless part of that entire story. Uh, you you want to know what I think? I think that they made it up. I think that they found some random book, and then, then somebody from PragerU added that portion in, because that is the weirdest thing ever. That is the <laughs> weirdest like side side note I've ever seen. I've never read an article where it's like, here's these battle motions, and then it's like, like imagine if this was the doc, like the the thing for like George Washington, and like in the middle of like talking about him winning the Revolutionary War, there was just a random segment introduced that's just like, oh yeah, somebody made up a story about him chopping down a cherry tree or some shit, and then it just went back yeah. to talking about the Revolutionary War, the cake interlude, yeah. yeah. What I'm, I guess, what I'm saying is the cake is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you can kill me now. Right, oh, that's epic. You can kill me Let's now. Let's watch the end here. With the, the furry shit here. The, uh, the, the wish fulfillment for the guy. The guy who wrote the story, this uh, this segment is definitely the guy in the costume. Also, I find yeah, I do yeah, find yeah, it yeah, ironic. Yeah, yeah. I do find it ironic that these people are are putting a uh, a man in a pup suit in their show for children. Yeah. Very very strange, if you ask me. <laughs> it is. It is a. Uh, this seems like, uh, you know, exposing children to kink, if you ask me. Yeah, exactly. I, it I mean, far, you got the farting kink, you got the inflation kink, you mm. got furry, you got pup play. This is, this is fucked up. This is some fucked up shit. Yeah, this mm. is cuckoldry. This is basically like, uh, this is basically like a drag queen story hour, except for its furry, uh, story. Furry hour. fart. Guys, I, I know, I know this might not be a popular opinion to say, and maybe I'll, I'll be considered gatekeeping, but I don't think Prager you should be shown at Pride. I, I think I, I agree with you. No, I'm in agreement. Believe it or not, you found you found it. You found the issue that we agree on on that. Yeah, yeah. Our actions is a value we believe in, and that helps everybody. Now, are you responsible, Otto? <gasps> yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you for watching Otto's Tales. Check out some of our other stories, too. Keep reading, keep watching, and keep being responsible. Bye. Be responsible kids. What the hell? That We're so glad you joined sucks. us for today's reading. Story that sucks. Ugh. Yeah, look at that. that was bad. King Alfred and the Cakes, an English legend. They made this yeah. shit up. They made that shit up, and then they realized that people were going to look into it, and so they just went and added it. I, I, I'm I, calling it now. This is my Alex Jones. Listen, the fucking goblins over at Prager U, they inserted it into the Wikipedia article. Holy shit. <laughs> They threw it in there. Look at this. Yeah. Look at that. It doesn't even fit in. The one citation is like some random dude's journal. <laughs> it is a very strangely laid out here. It's a legend in the middle of all this. Yep.
It's very weird. But uh, cake legend. Yeah, they're, that's Prager U, and you know what? They're they're coming for your children. They they are. Uh, apparently, literally. Prager U gets played quite frequently at schools, which is horrifying. But, that is uh, that is horrifying to think about. That is yeah, so not, bad. Not at all fun. Um, <sighs> do we want to watch some uh, some candy? Let's do the candy. Night? We can watch something fun. Yeah, hit me yeah, with the candy. This is something we we have watched this before, but it's been a while, and I feel like uh, Demon Mom, I feel like you'll like this one. Ooh, ooh, this is uh, this is a very wholesome uh, video. It's a uh, this is a cute house. All right, let's oh, do okay, it. Okay, okay. Is that is that all good? Yeah, oh, I don't I'm know good with it. Work. Uh. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. By the dress up gang. We like to, you know, just wrote some like fun sketch comedy. Hey, hey, man. Oh my god. That house is fucking cute. <laughs> Hey, Master House? Yeah. It's cute. Cute as fuck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me see the inside. Okay. Come on in. Oh, are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, oh, fuck! Look at this shit, yo! There's a succulent <laughs> inside. Yo, hey, come check this out. Oh, no! This is a cute house is inside an actual size cute house. Whoa. Is this fiddle leaf plant? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a fiddle leaf tree. That's cool. <laughs> right here. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! Fuck. Who's that? Nana. Hey. She comes over every Sunday to bake cookies. Oh, that's cute. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Whose house is this? Mine. It's cute as fuck, man. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. One, two, six, seven, eight, Mount <laughs> Avenue. All right. Get down here, man. Oh, no. This house is cute as fuck. Well. Okay, I know what the moral of the story is going to be here. It's cute as dick. <laughs> wait, I mean, yeah, wait, wait, do you want to yeah. give your prediction here? Yeah, I'm going to give my prediction for the lesson. Because, I mean, if we got to have a lesson for okay. everything, uh, I'm ready to have a lesson for this. Uh, so the lesson is going to be that this house was incredibly cute. But then men kept coming inside of it. Um, and now, and by the end of it, it will be totally trashed. And the, the lesson will be that, uh, don't get on the cock carousel. That's going to be, that's going to be the lesson because there's so many men coming into that cute house that it's going to fall apart. This, cute house this video was made by Prager U, So I, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I've got it. I, I'm, I'm locking in my answer. Hey, what's up everyone? Packs for Donnie. Oh, yes. Ooh. It's a cute outfit for Helena. Who's Helena? Oh! <laughs> oh, that's not Helena. That's Helena. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Holy shit. I love pigs, Hello. by the way. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every Sunday they beg. Like your bracelet. It's cute. Come on, man. Let's You guys see these coasters? The giraffes are cute. They are cute. Just like your bracelet. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you a question, Craig. Are my pants on fire? No. Oh, weird. Doesn't. It kind of sounds like you're calling me a liar. I'm not trying to call you a liar. You think my bungalow is cute? Hmm? I'm sorry. You think my sconces are cute? Well, this tension. You think my pig's cute? I know damn well you think my bar cart's cute. So I think it's safe to say that I know cute. Oh shit. So when I say that your bracelet's cute, either I'm a fucking liar or your bracelet is fucking cute. <laughs> so I'll ask you one more time. Are my pants on fucking fire? No, no. No man, look, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you a liar. 
wish I could recognize Cutie myself. Hey, what's up, Joe? Whoa. I wish you could, too, homie. <laughs> was there someone in your life who made you feel like your shit wasn't cute? Yeah, okay, Gloria. Are your mom's sister or your dad's sister? My mom's. Have you ever told her how she made you feel? I need to. You're probably telling me my shit's cute. I'll feed you. This fool knows what's up. All this shit going on. Yeah, he's telling me my shit's cute and I can't accept it. Well, Frank, if you would like to tell your Tia, oh my we God. can create that space right here. Give you an opportunity <laughs> to do that. Profound. Is this where you thought this would go, Demon Mom? <laughs> no. I was stuck in Prager Mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cutest video I think I've, I've ever we've, certainly the cutest video we've ever shown on this well, channel Frank, your tea is not here but maybe there's someone else you can speak to this is the world if the gays win reminds you of your yeah <laughs> anybody here that holds a space for your tea let me check it out and Tia that, that's your aunt okay uh, I'll be Tia What's going on? Where are we? Set it up. We're in the kitchen. Uh, what are we doing there? Mm. We're making pozole. Pozole. Is that like a pasta? It's a uh, beef stew. Beef stew. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We had just got dressed for church. We were both looking cute as fuck. I did my hair and everything. Is when I first started using gel. <laughs> yeah, it was a little. Told Sonic that he looked cute. <laughs> Sonic, you look cute today. Cross these two doors. I was wearing the same. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to tell me anything because you're not cute. You'll, you'll never be cute. Not cute. Yeah, you are. You're no, not friend. cute. Why would you think you're cute? I'm cute. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You you're not cute. You'll never be cute. Man, fuck that. Your fucking pozole sucked anyway. What did you say to me, Mijo? I just felt like Both have the Looney Tunes ties. Yeah. Wearing trousers. What do we look like? You look cute. Can I help you? Can I help you with something? I'm cute. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You're not cute. Mm -hmm. I'm cute. You're not cute. You're saying I'm cute. You are not cute. I'm cute. You're not yeah. cute. Right. I'm cute. cute. You're not yeah. cute. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Frank. Tell him, Frank. You're, you're not cute. I'm fucking cute! You certainly are cute. Yeah. Yeah. Aww! <laughs> you are cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I've been waiting on you, too. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? That was awesome! <laughs> I make this all every Sunday. I gotta say, that was fucking cute. That was yeah, fucking that cute. Was cute. That was cute as fuck. fuck. That was really cute. That was the most fucking cute thing ever. It totally went differently than I predicted. I got, I got, <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. destroyed with facts and logic in this, in this uh, thing. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, got, you got destroyed by cuteness and group therapy. I did. I did. That was uh, super cute. Max and Logic's greatest weakness. Yeah. The greatest enemy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I gotta um, say, pretty goddamn cute. Your link is cute, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your link is cute. Um. Yeah. Uh. Well, wh what do we think? We've, uh, you know, should we uh, wrap call it up? a night? We've been, yeah, we, we can wrap it up. Should we wrap this one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, well, I gotta, I gotta be up all night editing a video. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say thank you both for having me on. This has been a wild ride. I've had a, a fantastic time. Anytime y'all want to chill again, hit me up, and you know you go, you know we'll do it. This was fun as hell, and I gotta Absolutely. say, no, I gotta say, awesome. I just gonna end it up by saying your link's cute, bro. Your link is fucking cute. This is a cute <laughs> link. <I> gotta say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, and yeah. Hell Same yeah. you, Demon Mama. It's been great having you on. Great guest. Uh, good stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Um, who should we 
twitch.tv forward slash the goat and the goblin if you want to find uh, these uh, cute motherfuckers. Uh, that's where you go. Oh, Twitch.tv yeah. forward slash. Um, the wait, Demon, are you gonna keep? Are you gonna keep streaming for a little while? I am. While? I am gonna keep streaming so, for we'll a while. Just read, we'll yeah, just yeah. Bring everybody then. over. I'm gonna do a couple more, uh, oh, a couple yeah. more goofs and gags and giggles and whatever. And then, uh, yeah. So send everybody over if you wanna. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Thank yeah, you so be. much, and uh, it's been really, really wonderful. Thank you so much. No, this was. This oh, has yeah. been so much fun. Uh, yeah, we'd love to have you on again for sure. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Ah, oh, thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And uh, you can just keep on watching Demon Mama as we're rating in right now. Thank you. Peace out. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> All right. Hell yeah. That was awesome. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, that was sick. Thank you. Now I just have to turn off this the Discord. And there we are! We're back, everybody! We're back! Yay! We're back! Woo! That was super fun! We had a good time! We made goofs and gags, we laughed, we told silly stories.